get nothing going. <laughs> I wanted him to look in the camera before he died. Like, <laughs> pop. Jojo was like, he killed Professor X in in his mind. Like, <laughs> How you kill me in my, in my in mind? He, he, he Professor X, Professor That's X. That's crazy that he came back. I can say it fast enough. Yeah, I didn't know what you, were, what you were going for. <laughs> so you, I was trying Professor to Professor SSX. <laughs> Yeah, that that was insane. I think that the what y'all think about the music fight? I that was the scene. worst thing I've ever seen <laughs> in the was, history I of the world. It, and that's what that's that what was I took Disney. Away from the movie. It took it took <laughs> so me Disney. outside of my my inner spirit came out of the theater and went home and never came. I, I think I threw a, I, I threw a half <laughs> note at you. It <laughs> threw a treble. No. A treble. You threw a treble. What the and the beats were whack. <laughs> it was Disney. <laughs> the worst. Sorry, it was like a Pinocchio scene. fight. That was Terrible. so funny. Spoiler alert. Uh, Man. Doctor Strange too. There's a music fight. That's not yeah. a spoiler yeah. alert. There's yeah. a music People fight. People fighting it. Yeah, we yeah. can't. But, but, that no, doesn't spoiler give. Spoiler alert is gone. For Doctor Strange's been out a month. Yeah. But it's also like that doesn't give anything away. If somebody told <laughs> me there's a music fight, I'd be like, what the hell? What does that mean? <laughs> like, eight, and it was crazy because it was like. The, the sound when they hit each other was like, boom. Right. Like, or, <laughs> I was like, this is Snow White. <laughs> Did you block it with the same notes, my boy? Man. Hey, I was all here for a zombie doctor. Oh, the zombie was. Oh, fantastic. man, that was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Souls, wings. I never expected a jump scare in a Marvel movie. Oh, the no. whole, well, I mean, it the was whole Sam, horror Sam Raimi was the director, so. Yeah. yeah. Is he, 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 is he a horror boy? He, he did yeah. Evil Dead and all that. I didn't know. I just knew he did Spider-Man. It was mm. cool to get a little horror in there. Yeah, because... I mean, he is a sorcerer supreme. Well, he's not, but their their whole thing is like he could be. He just yeah. wasn't because he was absent for those five. Doctor years. Strange. Yeah, so he he was blipped right. back when Thanos. So oh, because he was gone away, they had it. to basically reappoint uh, sorcerer supreme. So he's funny. So he was a sorcerer supreme at yes. first, and they gave it to Wong. And now, well, he well he he's blipped, great. so he was gone. So like, well, who's going to be sorcerer supreme? Why don't they now? just give it back? He home now. Because that's, that's, that's not that's not how I think that's how it works. You gotta yeah. die and then pass yeah, it you on. Gotta give, you gotta die? Probably. Everybody gotta come. You gotta fly in. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant come. I was like, what? You got a ceremony of that? <laughs> Everybody has to come at once. <laughs> like this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he probably is wild on the coochie, like, yeah, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Oh, making, ev- <laughs> making her in every universe come at the same time. <laughs> That's really that's good Gucci work. Two thousand of you just came. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Two thousand women coming at the same time. You know, Pat, if Pat had the powers, this nigga would not be saving oh, the universe. Oh, Pat would never listen. Hey, hey, Pat was here. Hold on, real quick. I got seven universes going. I Wait, got that's Gucci the souls together. of the undead. Yeah, I just wanted to see what it was like. <laughs> you, you made an undead condom. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Use them. <laughs> Use them. I think that's what killed Pat. Uh, hey, hey, help us. <laughs> now, I was rolling weed with one of my things. You know, I got hey, weed from this other multiverse. You know, the, crazy. you know the part she was looking for somebody whose mind to break when they were doing yeah, the shield? Yeah, yeah. I was like, that would have been me. <laughs> that would have been me. She would have came behind my ear. Coochie. <laughs> <Swear. laughs> Booty. <laughs> Fat booty. That's hilarious. If, she, if, she, if that was me, she would have been like, eight Chick-fil-A nuggets. <laughs> Hot, fresh. Where? Tell Listen, me now. I'll said, burn this place. I'll kill you before like, you. She stop me. Why would you knock it down the people? <laughs> eight piece. Eight piece nuggets. <laughs> Why would you knock it down the people? <laughs> you, you saw when he ran away. He was knocking people that's over. Somebody, that's because she said run. Yeah, well, that nigga, you say eight piece. <laughs> I got to sale get to that. for free. And all of these people here, these ain't going to last, my nigga. You got to <laughs> run. You got to run. <laughs> Niggas ain't had Chick-fil-A ever. They take that Polynesian sauce. It's a dog, nigga. They know that monks ain't got no Chick-fil-A. Rings flying everywhere. Niggas, there's clean rings just everywhere. <laughs> the, chick, the food truck just pulled up. <laughs> Be first in line. <laughs> <laughs> Scarlet Witch could have just walked oh, up. No. Nigga. I would have stood no chance against that whisper. Oh my God. Can you imagine going back in time and just showing people like the technology that we have here? And Man. They think you're a wizard. Dog, the technology we have 
from our life. Yes, that's like, what I'm saying. Like, I mean, not even like back in time. I'm talking about just within our life. Yeah, the stuff is like, bro. We used to carry around. I don't know. Pat did. We used to carry around quarters yeah. to call our mom. We still yeah. have quarters. No, no, no. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> we used you to told us around. when you were five, eventually you're going to be able to pull something out of your pocket <laughs> you know what's and crazy? see your mom's face. <laughs> you know what's crazy? I hear all, like, I hear the quarter stories from my dad. He told them as folklore when I was a kid. <laughs> folklore? He was, yeah, he was, he used to always say that. He was just like, you know, we used to go up and, like, we have to go to and open this door and put the quarters in. And we'd be like, how much time would quarter get, Papa? <laughs> He'd be like, man, a quarter gets you 30 like, minutes. The fuck? Quarter without the jail phone. <laughs> He'd be bouncing on his knees. Like, and then what? You couldn't just pull it out of your phone, Papa? Nope. Papa. We had to drive. No, I remember he told us about beepers, too. I couldn't oh, understand. Yeah. He was just like. Yeah, I had a pager. If a pager, somebody yeah. paged me, I would have to find a, a pay phone, the pull over real quick, Ponica, and here's somebody, yo, what up? Somebody called. Like, oh, you don't even know who that is. You don't know who it is. So it's a, co- it's, your code. It's it's like a only, box for missed calls. What are you, 32 or 30? 32. There's only six year difference no. between us two. But that's I how could much not, I couldn't I afford didn't get it. I couldn't afford the, the cell phone initially. Yeah, so I got yeah. the pager. Yeah. And then I'll call and I'll call him like, yo, somebody called to here. She's like, yeah, such and such a I hear right over her house. And but not you still only that, to. that was like the best. Like all oh, drug dealers had that at one time. Pagers were expensive. Pagers were Melissa had a pager. I was like, before I met her. I was like, you had a pager? Like, pager. it was like, I had a regular pager, people didn't have pagers? And That's I had a crazy. two-way. I know when the three-way came out, I had a cell phone at that time, and I went ahead and got the three-way because I was stunting on these niggas. I wanted the two-way. The two-way is probably the, the two-way and the talk the talk boy from yeah. uh, Home Alone like, uh-huh. are probably uh, the two way. most pieces of technology that I never got that I wanted. You that talk I, boy was like, I, I, could do I, I, I saw name. that in Home Alone. I didn't yeah. even register that. You know what real. it was? It wasn't a real. It wasn't oh. a real toy. Yes, it was. I mean, at, at oh, first, yeah, yeah, before yeah, the movie, it wasn't real. But they, Nigga, the movie oh. was successful. Literally they turned a, it into a movie. It was, oh, a, it was a message machine. It really was just <laughs> really was a tape that, recorder, actually. That's, that's what I think about it. Ain't that what a pager is? It's just like something that shows you you have a missed call? Yeah. Basically. Basically. So, I mean, when you reduce it to that, it's yeah. like, damn. <laughs> what about <laughs> you do that? What about uh, spam and like uh, oh, cold calls? You don't know. Nah, what it is. Don't, yeah, so they, you could call a cold call back, and they'd be like, "Hello, uh, yeah. <laughs> really? How, how or the wrong number, sure. or, or the number would pick you. up." Yeah, that was insane. pay phoning. They was pay phoning. I mean, uh, beepering to pay phones. Yeah, like I just watched the wire back. Again. Oh, right, right, right. Niggas was calling the payphone. Well, because yeah, that you was can the call coolest. Call a payphone if you, if you that's the number. crazy. That's the coolest like, use of a payphone. You stay phone. here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you. Yeah. Stay at this thing. Oh, that was the untraceable yeah. way to yeah. call people. Drug dealers whole... kept the, the payphone alive in movies. Oh, absolutely. Because mm-hmm. like the payphone is super cool when you're when you're like dealing drugs. But other mm-hmm. than that, it's just like Superman. Yeah. Dressing room that's lame as hell. Literally, the only ones that are cool now are in London. Like, and when I went yeah. to London, I opened. I was like, "This is disgusting." Actually, like yeah. from America, I was like, "Oh, the red payphone." Mm-hmm. I'm gonna oh, go in it's there, just poop in it. It's just like a nigga pissed in there, yeah, and like there's gum, like and I'm just like, "This isn't it's really a mini subway." That's cool as that's I thought. Disgusting. <laughs> That's anyway. weird. Yeah, pages. I don't. I don't. I, my dad's had one, and I didn't get it. The only thing I didn't get that I really wanted was uh, was a sidekick. Ooh, I, I thought you said original. you had, oh, no, you had a two way. I, I had a two way. Oh, that's what I thought you were talking swivel. about. Wait, what's a two way? The, the two way was like you could make some calls on it, and then the three way was a flip up. It had the, the, but what'd the they flip do? up screen. Was it a phone or a like, text? You could message. like text on it. On the the, the sidekick is what Usher had in the video. Yeah, it, it swiveled. Okay, yeah, that's the one I thought you were talking about. Nah, I I'm... thought, because I, I missed the two way thing, and I originally thought that a two way thing you only had, you could only contact one person. I thought it was like the walkie talkie of text <laughs> messages. <laughs> so I was just like, do you, I always thought you had to have a different one per person you. <laughs> uh, and then there was the next tail chirp, though. The next tail chirp was uh, like, I didn't that's get what that all either. Man, the, 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 that, that noise was cool. That. that right there? Because like, it was like a certain else? distance. Well, anybody, or you could no, chirp you had, anybody who had like a walkie number, talkie. Anybody yeah. had the next tail number, like you put the, because they they're basically had, like, voice notes, notes. huh? They're kind of like no, voice basically notes. just a walkie talkie. But how far would but it couldn't go? you play it back? But I think if you, because I never had one, but I think if like each phone had a specific number, so you would just put that person them and you could chirp them versus right. call. But oh, I mean, yeah. if you were back home and I'm here, could mm-hmm. I chirp you that far? I don't know. Let's let's find out. Yeah, because it was kind of like walkie-talkie-ish. So that yeah, usually that's what works I with thought the radius. Like, yeah. You know, we are in high school or college within this certain amount but of But then it miles. became like the drug dealer phone, and that yep. would be a horrible strategy because you knew that the police, that would be easy <laughs> for the police. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's yeah. a lot of stuff I don't usually see. That was see. the megahertz. ESMR. <laughs> right. Megahertz <laughs> range. Yeah. That, the I people in the out. chat are saying you can chirp from anywhere. For as far as you could go? You could chirp from anywhere. I think because it Nationwide. had a wireless service. So if you had a wireless service, it's just like calling without the um, without the ring. So I would just hit your contact and say chirp to here? Yeah, maybe they had and that. And it'll go, and I'll be like, what's up to here? Yeah, like, you can go back and forth. But can you, can, can you play it back, or do you, would you have to hear it right then and there? No, it's just there. It, it's not a saving type thing. It's literally a walkie-talkie. Oh. So you take your finger out the press button, the talk button. It's, it's kind of cool. message is over with. That reminds me about BBM. BBM was just a great time in life. Mm-hmm. What was BBM? BBM? Blackberry, Blackberry Messenger? Blackberry Messenger? Yeah. Uh, towards the end, I didn't really. Oh, man. That was social media prior to social media for me. It yeah. was like every everybody had it. Mm-hmm. Everybody in my in Tacoma well, had Well, they thought BBM. they were invincible too, uh, bro. Oh, that be that like yeah. technology, dog. I Listen. don't know how. What what did they? What did did they not? What they did they miss? That they were in. in, in was it not adapting though? They was just yeah, not it was adapting. not adapting. They 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 pushed back on touch screens from the yeah. beginning. Like when Palm was like, you remember the trio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The trio came out first. Yep, I remember that. And then that. they had uh, the trio and then was the crazy iPhone. expensive. And weren't they like over a grand when they came yeah, out? Yeah, trios were stupid. Oh, yeah. Like only business people had them. Yeah, nah, we, they, they, niggas, niggas well, had them too. I don't know about you. <laughs> I've, never, I've only seen them business, and it's just like <laughs> you could do charts on here. Niggas I've never seen anything funny. Stylus, yeah. icons, the yeah. touch screen, they were like, I think <clears throat> back to them uh, not adapting. They were like, you can't email fast enough without the QWERTY yeah. keyboard. Hmm. But then Apple was like. What we'll about you? nobody cares about that? <laughs> <laughs> it was hard. Do you remember first trying it and you felt like I'll never get this? Dog, yeah. I watched the Steve Jobs, the Apple event from that year, uh-huh. and he was literally teaching people. He was like, I was, and it's it, it's crazy that you had to teach people now because it's so second nature. But he was like, right. this is scrolling. Yeah, no one knew how to do right. that. So you will, in order to go up in your phone, you will. Just do this in the right. phone. And I was like, people were like, oh, yeah. man, right. what? Yeah. And it's like. I remember that. Because yeah. I, I felt like I couldn't type fast at all. And yeah. I, I remember seeing people younger than me, like, glug, 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 yeah. and I was like, I don't think, I think I'm old. I felt like the buttons, the physical buttons made us think it made a difference. But it yeah. really didn't. It didn't. Because like, it's muscle memory anyway. Yeah, you're yep. just typing like this. You just, you have nothing to press. But right. the tapping is the same thing. I'm like, telling you, man, that's the thing with Blockbuster, with, with BlackBerry. If you are rich, even like taxis, mm-hmm. like your your competitor doesn't have to take your whole market share. No, they just need a piece. They just need to innovate. They just in need to innovate. They don't need to. Right, and it's like because taxis, if taxis would have adapted Uber technology, Uber would be dead. Right. If if hotels were like, oh, hotels are just now being like, maybe Airbnb is something we should be concerned about. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the thing with Netflix too, like the reason they suffered is because the people did adapt. Uh-huh. Yeah, because they were like, "Oh, okay." The uh, people was watching The Office. Then Netflix was like, "Look how many people watch The Office." And then NBC was like, "Nigga, give that back." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, then all that's... the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's too. But now yeah. they ha- they didn't adapt, <laughs> but they, and they don't have the libraries as deep as their competitors. Yeah. Uh-huh. So Disney alone, like Netflix, has no original IP that's older than seven years old. Right. Their first I- original IP Damn. is. Is Orange is the New Black and House of Cards? That was cards. the first. Yeah. Wave? That's, the that's the first original two. IP. Wow. Disney's original IP is eighteen forty. Yeah. Cinderella. Nineteen thirty-seven. They it can was, run back. It was back. still common to say nigger. In no, <laughs> seriously, they got racist Mickey Mouse thing. But even like Star Wars. Star Wars is. 70s. Sixty years old. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right? Star Wars couldn't be found on streaming before Disney had it. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, like you had to rent it. You was no, yeah. there was no free stream. Like, there was no Netflix, so you could just watch it without having to pay an extra fee. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And George, they, I mean, they massaged his back and his feet to get him massaged. But that's again. just one line on right. Disney Plus. Is Star Wars. Then you go over one more, and it's Marvel, Marvel. Yeah. which is another hundred all year old. The Marvel. Like, they got right. all the they stuff. They got the cartoons mm-hmm. and yeah, stuff, and they took all that stuff off Netflix. They were like yeah. Jessica Jones, nope. Luke, King, yeah, they took nope. all the Netflix shows. They took now. all. They're so it's like now. you killing Netflix twice at the same time, mm. and now they they catching Damn. up. And Netflix, you cannot generate IP nearly as quickly as these companies that have been around hundred years. And Unless you can't you bring back. Ad, you can't face. bring on ads. <laughs> yeah, but after you've been like, but they are talking about doing it though. Now they now they're gonna be just like. Like everybody else. Yeah. Hulu right. was like, yeah, come on with us. Yeah. We've been at this. Told you, nigga. <laughs> listen, I'm at a learn. Listen, and, that, and that's just not in Damn, like that's the crazy. technology mm-hmm. industry. That's like in everything. If you're rigid and resistant to change, you are going to get left behind. That's why stand-up comedians suffered for a long time because they were like, I am funny on stage, and mm-hmm. the stage is all that matters. And then the comedy clubs were like, yeah, but funny don't sell tickets. 
Alone. Funny alone. Funny, no, no. Yeah. Funny does not sell tickets. Mm -hmm. Likeability, interest, wanting to come see you, that sells tickets. There's a hundred niggas funnier than me, you, Pat. Mm -hmm. Them niggas just be funny. <laughs> right? You all know a funnier person than you. Them niggas well, just can't sell out a, an arena. Kev, take, take your, keep your distance. There's plenty of comedians on there who've been like, this. why is this person not bigger? And yes. Part of it's getting them that platform. They that are like. funny. Yeah. They're already funny, but it doesn't matter. Because even <sighs> when you were funny, it, prior to keep your distance, prior to the internet, it took uh, The Tonight Show, Comic View. It took somebody else who said, hey, here's these funny people. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, oh, you're not. we're not booking you because you're funny. We're booking you because you were on Comic View. True. Comic View says people want to come see you. Yeah. And right. now that stuff is gone. The seats, baby. Yeah. So let the, I feel hey, like you want to start the episode. Let <laughs> so that's all because he's no, nah, but like you this. was like, you, I want to get into something like, no, I, like no, no, I was just, I was just piggybacking off of that. Like, don't piggy on my back. That's <laughs> I was damn it. It's way too much. I got back. You can't pig on my back. <laughs> you pig yourself. I know, but you pig on my back. I'm out. And that would be a double bacon sandwich. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you think it was just like <laughs> <laughs> You thought you had a friend? I had that for, for like less than five seconds. He was the on payoff my side. was too big. I'm sorry. He <laughs> was like, hey, awesome, but you're fat. Hey, we was, we was, was both going against him. We was together on towards the here. And he was like, no, no, no. I'll be on my own, but eventually I'll see you. You pull up in your little truck, throw away all of those windy boxes. Hey, hey. <laughs> Why you tell, you always want to tell people that something that was supposed to be between us? <laughs> I just rewatched the pocket sausage thing on eighty five South. That really came out of like to hear was really just like, what time is it? Kevin had sausages in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos was like, what? Like, there was even a hint of nothing related. We wasn't talking about childhood meat. Pockets, church vans. <laughs> he was like, I'm just gonna you you did you know you were gonna say that that day just because? Like no. why <laughs> what in your mind was like tell them niggas about the pocket yeah, sausage? I was like That's <laughs> Y'all ever put sausage in your mind? <laughs> <laughs> it was so random. So and I hadn't talked to you about that in like five years. That I, was a story. A, a story I told at all dev. It'd been in, a long time. In my that. brain, it was always like raw sausage, just like <laughs> raw, like just in jean Hot pockets, cooked, charred on the outside. But were they wrapped in something? No, they it was. They were naked. Straight naked. naked. They had they had lint and like hair on. They're it. just oh. straight. They just were coated in what's in my pocket. <laughs> a little bit of hint of coated. of a uh, quarter <laughs> butt. <laughs> but for sure, had lint. I, I definitely was like. <laughs> and I ate them all the way, <laughs> all the way. Wait, no bun. Nope. Listen, the, the, the funniest part <laughs> just, just straight back. <laughs> was he had straight him in his hand when he got to the door, and the church van driver saw him and didn't try to open the door, so he was just like, "Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's one at a time." <laughs> I tried to, I tried to get up, but my hand was slick. So I was like, <laughs> then I had to put the other one in so I could get full coverage on the on the wow. bullet. <laughs> wow. What kind of sausages? <laughs> Them like circle kielbasa things. I don't. Are they like they polish? curled in your pocket? No. Well, it, my mom had cut it. You know, so it comes in this like oval. Yeah. And then you cut it into a piece, and then you cut the middle, and you you know cook it flat. Oh, got so, it. And then she cut. Oh, it those back. are good. The polish the best. sauces. Those yeah. are really good. Those are the best. They and are burnt. Good. And you are... with mm. spicy mustard. Bye. We didn't have that. Oh, oh you just, you, wait, you had no sauce? No sauce. Great. <laughs> That's rough. <laughs> no sauce for you. Grease, grease, grease would have been the sauce, <laughs> but the pockets took the grease. What was straight. going on that day? <laughs> That's always how I ate them. What's going on straight, that day? Straight, straight hot sauce. Why weren't they wrapped in a napkin or something? <laughs> it was in a rough. I already it was had a box of making plain. I would literally, I ain't had a chance to put my whole stuff together. <laughs> wait, were you an adult? No, no, I was like eight. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, I, was I see the randomness. I, I thought you meant like recently. Yeah, I was, Kev, I was, I was picturing a dog. Yeah. Yeah. Get that's into why a church. I, was like, I, I, I pictured you here. <laughs> that would make no sense. That's what I was, why would I be riding in a church van in LA, first of all? <laughs> this nigga Pat was really like, I don't understand why he, why he didn't. Well, now I really don't get why Tia brought it up. But <laughs> that's my whole hey. point. I had to keep that heat off of me, baby. No. It was a smooth transition. <laughs> you at, at Kev on Stage Studios, 
and you forgot you just had a, a rushed morning, and to hear saw you take sausages out of your pocket oh and eat God. them. <laughs> there would be no excuse to be putting hot sausage in my pocket at 30, like, 38. Listen, so. man, the conversation kept almost getting to a point where it died down. I had to pull something because I was like, I got 20 minutes off, off that. <laughs> 20 it's minutes all back, off videos, that. clips, Bruh. everything. It was a smooth transition. It was almost as smooth as the ultra smooth package from Manscaped. You understand me? Our <laughs> friends over at Manscaped heard you, and they listened, and so they brought it back. The ultra smooth package, and it's, t- it's time to stop, drop, and order this premium shaving kit. Now, everyone knows that the Lawnmower 4.0 is the best electric shave for your balls, but... If you're looking for an even closer shave for your balls, then there is the Ultra Smooth Package. It's the perfect set. It is uh, it's time to shave. Hold on, matter of fact, let me show you this. You know what I'm saying? Look, well, y'all think we playing with it. You got you know? it? What? Woo! I you shaved my it? balls that last night. You see this Ultra Smooth Package right here? You got the crop exfoliator. You got the crop gel. You got the crop shaver. You got to give you some extra blades right there. <clears throat> let me tell you something. <laughs> I ain't never had... Balls this smooth. Water hits my balls. Boy, they me, just roll off. Put a single off. on me, Ken. Let me show you my balls. <laughs> <laughs> these things are like <laughs> as smooth as this thing. <laughs> I got you a get, pocket sausage, all right. And that thing is smooth. <laughs> you get the same shaver as the crop shaver razor. You get the crop exfoliator and the crop gel. So you no longer have to boil from your lady, okay, or whoever in the house has got the razors. You Listen, you got your own, all right, and you can get it done with a precise trim and precise time. So, ladies and gentlemen, specifically fellas, let's step it up, all right? The days of you walking around with a willy mammoth hair type of region right there is over. You have no excuse for it. Hair can hold bacteria, it can hold smells and all of that and mess up your whole situation, you and your partner's situation. So get rid of that right now. Step one, Crop exfoliate. Step two, crop gel. Step three, it's time to shave. But before you do any of that, you need to go to Manscaped right now. Manscaped.com. Use the code DIYS, and that gets you 20% off. You understand me? 20% off the ultra smooth package that they just relaunched. And you can do that right now by going to manscaped.com and using the promo code DIYS and get 20% off. DIYS. And get get those balls smooth. It feels me. It's a lot of smooth ball talk. Yeah, baby. A lot of smooth ball talk. Balls need to be smooth, man. Uh, I think yeah, I, I like smooth. I man, like. We came up in a. I don't know. You know, you, you're 32. You yeah. probably remember the thickety era. I was a. Oh yeah. There was some thick. It was, thick, thick, it was civil rights movement. It was. Thickety. It was. The, it was the porn Bush era when yeah. we came up, and that was kind of like. It was kind of like your 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 um road to passion by having a big bush down or having all that what? hair down. Road to passion, right? Right of, right of passage, right of passage. It's kind of. Like, right. I wasn't out. even. I <laughs> wasn't even making fun of you. I really take, didn't understand what you t- said. Take that out. You said a road of passion. Passage, passage, Road of passage. It's a right. It's the road. Of <laughs> he either said road or road to passage. <laughs> it's epic. Road. To Cam kept no, sausage in his pocket. It's the road. Cam of was passage. walking around road to with orchid form sausage in his pocket. Road of passage. It was that green package with the the orange writing. His mama cooked and he put it right in his pocket. Right of passage is what Tahir was saying. Let's <laughs> cut all of this out, Keenan. Nah, this man. Keenan. Nah. Leave it in. <laughs> this is what we bring to the table. I feel like you have to ride a go horse raw, on the right of in. passage. Huh? <laughs> said, go raw, leave it in. <laughs> oh, whoa. <laughs> We're going raw. Right of passage. We didn't do a... Uh... <clears throat> The we didn't. We didn't do the the intro. And oh, I feel like we got to do it. You got to do it, Kev. We got to do it. We Kev, make Kev. a beat. Come on, I'll make a beat and make a beat. Oh, 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 make a beat. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, make a kill beat. a nigga dead. Oh, uh, 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 make a beat. Take a nigga bread. Oh, uh, buzz him in the uh, head. Hey, make a nigga beat. you dead. Oh, sausage in my pocket. Oh, Ooh, make oh, a nigga you dead. Yo, where you on my locket? Yo, make a beat. Mind myself. Yeah, I took your life. Yo, make a nigga. Yeah. Yo. I smack your wife. Hey, make no, a I beat. Won't. Yeah. Cause she's a fine lady. Hey, hey make ooh, a beat. I want uh, some sausage with some cream gravy. Uh, ooh, make, make a beat. I like yeah. cream gravy. I like uh, it white. Too. Make a beat. I like hey. Melissa. Yeah, yeah. She hey. is my wife. Boo. Make a beat. Going uh, to Vegas. Ooh. Hey. Going crazy. <laughs> make a beat. <laughs> I try to switch my make flow. Up. <laughs> I make a beat. Uh. 
<laughs> go with an MGM grand. Got a hundred, couple hundred Mega bands. Beat. And I also got a hundred grand in my pocket. Mega That's beat. a candy bar, not the money, nigga. Mega That's beat. a candy bar, not the money, nigga. Mega Caramel. Mega. Crispy rice. Mega <laughs> Chocolate Mega. cover. It tastes nice. Mega but Mega. I prefer the Twix left and right. Make a beat. Beat one. Yeah. Every single night. Make a beat. I like candy. I really like <laughs> Nigga ain't dropped a hundred grand. Say what happens in Vegas, stay in Vegas, or the first one sleep. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm be in that bed. Oh my God. Oh my God. Those are the same people who'd be like, it's wine o'clock. <laughs> oh. oh, it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> That's because Yo. you're going to be dead by eight. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Man. I'm going to be in that bed. You hear me? <laughs> My God. Uh, <laughs> I've never laughed that hard at, uh, at the intro, bro. Uh, that oh, that nigga great. jumped off the bus. He just jumped kill a nigga damn. Make a beat. Oh, kill a nigga damn. Wait a minute. <laughs> nigga let the beat be. I want to have that a was, song. That, that was, was on his song. heart. Kill a nigga dead. <laughs> Take a nigga bread. Shoot him in the head. <laughs> that nigga dead. Oh, that was premeditated. Dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I start about you dead, nigga. Nigga dead. Nigga dead. Yeah. Bring on the concrete. I was trying to keep the beat going. <laughs> nah, going to Vegas. Going to Vegas has the turn up line. So I was Make out. A beat, yeah. <laughs> I'm out of here. Make a beat. <laughs> I'm what out do here. you do? <laughs> people go don't go to Vegas. Vegas to go crazy. Go to Dang, Vegas. <laughs> I thought people would Let me tell you something. This is how old crazy. I am. That when we so went to the, uh, my high school reunion two week two weekends ago, <laughs> I was like. This Let's just get a sweet and bottle of alcohol here. People like going and to what? the club. Bought all, we, bought, we bought all the alcohol there. Got the room. Yeah, when we stopped at the liquor store, we bought yeah. like five hundred dollars of alcohol. It's pretty cheap out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's all right. Well, it's the houses right. don't have walls and stuff, so <laughs> <laughs> liquor is really like a coping mechanism. <laughs> Like you don't have no heat. This Take was this in spit. Vegas. Shut up. We did oh, we get in Vegas. Oh, y'all did? Yes, we flew to Vegas. <laughs> the East St. Louis people? They're from St. Louis. Four. <laughs> I thought you went to high school in East St. Louis. <laughs> no, I lived in East St. Louis. I always went to school in St. Louis. Oh. They came in like, oh, ceilings. <laughs> <laughs> so when it rains, <laughs> pool, nothing nigga. gets wet. We have a pool, nigga. <laughs> Things go back the next day. We're like, you got a pool, too? <laughs> oh, my God. How many of your high school class drove to Vegas? Um, actually, just me and my wife drove up. Uh, me and my wife, and then we had a couple that flew in because uh, my homeboy had worked in uh, L.A. that week. So him and his wife rolled up with Was it official everybody. high school, or you just hooked up with some No, no, it was rent. official. It was our 20-year high school year. Why'd you go? I was a class president. Hmm. So I planned it. Remember when we were on tour and I was talking to yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I was I felt like uh, Facebook kind of ruined the whole point of, of the reunions. Somewhat. When it's, well, How? Did it still... make that better? It made no, it I mean, easier. Before, and this is just my personal opinion. I feel like before, and I don't know, because I didn't go to either of my reunions. I really? Was just like, not even 10 years? I was just like, nigga, I see what y'all are doing on Facebook. I'm not interested. Kev, that's it, Kev. Y'all I'm be man, thinking bro, Kev's boy, so I'm not, nice, bruv. I'm not yeah. being mean. I'm just saying. Like, it's the same I feel thing like... as Instagram. You see what people are. And... That's what I'm saying. But I mean, well, Facebook first. But social media overall, it's like. Mm-hmm. I'm already you you know in all the, the sitcoms remember they go back to the high school reunion and be like I want to show you how I'm be oh. living and that I'm but that's really what it was like I want to show these people I'm doing okay yeah but now with social media I feel like I already 
That's the a surprise lot of people, element. But what Isn't, about saying, yeah. Yeah, seeing gone. how people are doing? <laughs> yeah. But not only that, there are there are a lot of people that it was a couple of people that showed up to ours that aren't on social media. It's still a lot of people that aren't on social media too, mm. and they're they're in contact they with the people with the are that do have the social media. <laughs> Most interesting they're telling people them are about it, but you know it's just it's how are you not on social media at all now? Niggas got stripes. With Often. crime. <laughs> crime, I get. Yeah, niggas got stripes. Right. But other than that, like... One of my homeboy sells pit bulls. He can't, he can't be on there. Like, he just have to tell... It's word of mouth. It's a word but of I mouth But I mean, he, could, he, he might not sell the pit bulls on social media, but right. he ain't on there at all. He's like, oh, nigga, if they see me, they gonna know I got pit. Stripes, it's, nigga. It, what does stripes mean? You already got, like... You already got charges like, against you. Oh, strikes. Like yeah. Oh, I thought you said stripes. Mm. I, I said stripes. stripes. You, you did? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was a regional thing, like that we call it. We we call it three. So wait, you thought it was like three stripes, and you're out of here. I just think of strikes just then in that moment. It's like man, I'm, I knew that was like I'm going away re- for life. I just had my that third was... strike. It's like oh, congratulations. <laughs> oh my god. No, it's a bad thing. I killed somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what it was? I was thinking like when the I streets when they were like, yo, you got to get your stripes. Like yeah, I that's what that. I thought. And I couldn't pull strikes anywhere. Strikes is like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Gotta do better than that. <laughs> I was like, Doc, I was, now I really was like, damn, oh, my third strike. Why I be hearing everything? No, I just, I literally thought there was a street term. So I was like, man, I don't be, I really was like, man, I don't be knowing none of the street yeah, terms. I was just when like, you said that, I was like, it's like maybe I gotta, I was, yeah, that's what they I got to get up on my street terms. That's why I just asked because I niggas. want to. It could still work though. Niggas got niggas got stripes. Well, they were in the streets. Well, they're in they stripes. Isn't like it a, a military term? Yeah, it's a good yeah, term. Like yeah, it's a, a military. Like a sergeant. Yeah. Yeah. I got my stripes. But that's yeah, a good thing. Thing. He, Yeah, he's a hood general. Yes. Yeah. 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 So like baby. Well, I'll start hood generals be on uh, social media. <laughs> yeah, when well, you when you're a general, you ain't doing too much then. You just basically yeah, calling shot. You telling niggas, yeah, that's 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 what you're doing. Oh man. I'm sorry. Did y'all talk about it? What the? No. the? We didn't because Pat wasn't here that day. Uh, he had an emergency. You were the first person I thought of. Yeah, me too. Honestly. And I wasn't even being funny. I was nah, like, I was Pat like, really likes he really Young Thug's music. That's yeah. crazy, yeah. I really was like, and I hit you. I was like, damn, you going to be okay? Because <laughs> today, Josh sent me this tweet. Them niggas not. Oh, no. They, 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 they're charging Gunna as that's a commander. What, that's what I. That, as a they, commander? They general. Yeah, yeah, like, a, like he's, he was a, like a, here, a let gang me read commander. It to you. This lady was in the court. She said, I was in court where a judge denied bond for Gunna, set his trial date for ju- uh, January 9th, 2023. I heard that. That's crazy. Prosecutors allege YSL is a gang, not just a record label. They also allege Gunna serves in a command role. And she goes on to say, prosecutors say Gunna is a documented gang member and that he and Williams direct their troops to commit, commit violent acts. The judge said his biggest concern was witness tampering. Gunna's attorney can file a renewed motion for bond at a later date. Yeah. That sucks. Re- I don't see it's Gunna rough like with that. Rico. Gunna looks like a cool, but you never know. Like I don't, I don't know the optics. It just looks like he's he's just a cool, fun going yeah. guy. Yeah, that's why I was saying. Like I said this on uh, here's the thing podcast. I was like, why y'all niggas don't have to? They really be doing street. You don't have to now. You don't. You could just talk about it. Let me tell you something. You know I feel like it's, it's the real? same way that like like. And I don't know, maybe he was a blood before, but when Chris Brown got to a certain level of success, he was like, I need to do something else. And then he started hanging around he had, Yeah, He had the opposite. Yeah. But like, the, ain't the point of the street to, to stay get, away from it? To get out eventually? Yeah. But or is that not the point? Yeah, it is the point, but it's like when you got money, you can go back and help the little niggas out and be like, yo, you've been, you been fucking with me for a while. Here's a little something right here. Mm. Boom, boom. Now they are at you. Your full allegiance. They'll do literally anything yeah. you need to do. But it feels the... like they were still in the. From what I read, but that's, that's the, the picture they definitely painted. Yeah, that's... of like continue, like they didn't make music. Yeah, like they were just doing <laughs> Rico's you uh, mean uh, crimes, like music wasn't an option. Well, I think that they were on somebody's radar, and when that that gun, the shootout happened on Lil Wayne's tour bus, that was enough for them to yeah. start building. Because that, that's one of the first things yeah, they've they been saying building in the intelligence. Charges. So they like, anytime, <laughs> when the feds are looking for you, they are going to build a case. Right. Mm-hmm. Because they don't want to, like, if I, if we got six, we got, we pulling you up on three charges, and you get all three of those denied, or, you know, you know without a shadow of doubt, mm-hmm. you're proven innocent, then we, we lost you. We can't yeah. charge you for those. But if we hit you with 16 charges and a Rico, oh, oh that's nigga, crazy. We gonna get you on something, that baby. Means they let you they let you do crime. They knew they was watching. I was like, oh, this nigga sell a dope again. Man. Oh, boy, boy, we bring these charges up. Th- that is crazy to think about them watching the whole time, like, dang, we killed the shit out of that. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I be saying. Like you, just like, you they are watching people they eating shit. Have they... crime committed against them, violence, and they're just like Noted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, noted. They be getting the informants killed, like yeah. all that. The feds do not care. They just once they, they just have want you, the case. 
they go they they don't want to let you yeah. go. So they'll let you do more just to, to I just, and best case. case scenario is going to be a Bobby Smurda situation where two or three people go. <clears throat> I'm sure more people win, but you is know, that a Rico? Yeah, they got they got Bobby on the Rico too. Dang, was he what nine? How long he's got nine? He like, originally Michigan? had like three, but then he took some of his homeboys time too. Oh, that's right, I remember that. So he was gone for how long? His good friend was five or seven. Yeah, he was gone because he popped right when we started all deaf, really, mm-hmm. and he just came home like like last year. He, t- he spent this, seven years, yeah. right? Seven he had or to nine. be at least seven. Yeah. Uh, 2016, he pleaded. Oh, he got seven, seven years and he did five. Reduced to five. He did five. And then what credit for two years he had already served while waiting to trial. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, that you no, can it be... was total six years. Yeah. That's crazy that you can just be waiting your sentencing for years. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah. That's but what like... happens to poor people. That's what happened to Khalif Browder. He, he got accused of stealing a backpack and right. he couldn't make bail. So he was just waiting for a trial uh-huh. for like over a year. Yeah, And right. he never even stole the... The thing in, in question, and his family had had like $500 for bail, he would have never been in prison. Mm-hmm. But his family couldn't even come up with $500. And when Sometimes they... I don't even tell you, though, because I read a story about this guy who served like six months in jail, not really not realizing his bond was $2. They what? didn't tell him? dollar bond. I'm going to pull up the story. Well, they, right they kept that from him? Or he, yeah, he I didn't... guess he never got his paperwork or something. Maybe he didn't go, he didn't get in the van when he was supposed to go to court or something like that, but... That's so crazy. That is insane. So wait, the two dollars? Something like two. So man. if he did steal the backpack, what would that have been? Like a fine? At most. It wouldn't have even been jail time, right? I mean, it might have been jail time, but I don't think. I think he had priors or something like that. I'm I'm in a little bit over my head, but I don't think it would have been. That's actually pretty crazy. Crazy okay. amount of time. Here it is, right here. Uh, Queens man serves. Where is it at? Unaware of two dollar bill spends nearly five months on at Rikers Island. Yeah. But see, that also tells me the system's not looking out for you. Oh no, of course not. Yeah, Rikers because, Island? God yeah, that's yeah, nigga, that's I didn't even know but bail could be that low at Rikers Island. I didn't, two dollars. I, I didn't know either. I didn't know that you went to Rikers Island for something that you would get bail two dollars for. Like so, like that's right. that's not a serious crime. I thought Rikers Island was some right. Like, and if oh, like, bail two dollars, just let yeah. the nigga go. Right. <laughs> like that, you. you that's weak as fuck. Like no, no, none of the guards was like, I got, I got a five. Let me just make sure that's that change. crazy. Right, right. <laughs> like you, you would need everybody on staff to be in cahoots to like not get this nigga his paperwork. Y'all can y'all can set that man free by just going to your car and, and going to the change. Seriously, change. that's but that's bro. The 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 justice system is built on poor oh, yeah. people. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. it's designed to. Ca- that's why rich people it don't be they don't they don't suffer the same consequences mm-hmm. because they'd be like, well, you're out on bail, and I have money for most of the poor people are. Lack of money and lack of good legal representation. Mm-hmm. Public defenders, if you get them, they are they are not too good. overwhelmed to be good. And they're mm-hmm. not as usually, this is nothing against them, but they're not usually as good as the rich, powerful people. Mm-hmm. Is there like a Jordan of public defenders? Like one that's just like, I of guess. Public defenders? You mean like a famous one? one? I, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like real good, but not good enough to be. I think like pub- a, a, public defenders usually come. They're 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 pretty green when they get there. Usually they're, that's they're like a new. starter role, anyways. Yeah. Right, but has anybody just stayed in that and just been like killing it? Only I bet the you there's a movie on coming on if, if somebody has. Only the ones on Law and Order, <laughs> the actors. <laughs> Michael B. Jordan was a public defender in that that movie about where yeah, Jamie Foxx was. Uh, I can't mm-hmm. think of the name Jamie of the movie. Jamie Foxx, yeah. But he was green. In that movie, he was Mercy. green. Mercy. I'm yeah. curious if anybody's like after 30 years of being the best criminal attorney, mm-hmm. I'm going back to get people. But even if you did. Mm-hmm. The thing that helps people get out of jail with money, you have time. Mm-hmm. You can focus on this case alone. Public defenders, even if they're good, they don't have time to focus on that. Like Johnny mm-hmm. Cochran, and when OJ got out, he has a team of lawyers yeah, team. who are paid to only focus on his crime. No, oh. public defenders are like, I got Pat at they eleven five, Kevin it's at eleven fifteen, to here at eleven thirty, yeah. Cam at eleven forty five. Yeah. Nigga, I can't it's possibly like spend no free time to yeah. give you right. guys all the stuff That's you need. That's the niggas who be bringing the wrong case. And yeah, they, like, have they all, all their got papers. the paperwork. So they just, just trying like... to plead you out. <laughs> they don't have time to go to trial. You're just going because, they, you know. It, you... Take, it takes a lot. Especially like if, if the if the charges brought against you require any type of like investigating. You got to uh, interview people. You got to review footage, all that type of stuff. Or check your, your schedule. Man, that, t- that stuff takes a lot of time. And that's why you need a team, like Credit Karma. If you're searching for a brand new credit card and you don't have the time to figure out which one has the best rewards for you, gets you the best cash back, the best miles for your specific airline that you travel on, 
go to Credit Karma, okay? Credit Karma uh, can make this so easy for you. If you've ever been rejected for a credit card, it happens way too often, and that's why Credit Karma created Karma Confidence Technology, helping their members apply with more confidence. And you get to, like I said, decide what rewards you want. Are you are you earning the best rewards? Credit Karma can help you compare your reward options so that you can find the card that fits your lifestyle, helping you earn miles or cash back for spending and doing the things that you want to do, all right? Credit Karma uses your credit profile to show you uh, offers that are tailored to your financial situation. So if you know, I'm just going back and forth to see my mom in the Midwest. Don't be showing me no credit card that's gonna get me uh, free trips to Spain. And I'm not going. I'm not going all of those places. <laughs> just give me what I need. Give me a couple miles, a couple Ooh. upgrades. You understand me? Uh, credit Karma partners with a wide range of card issuers. Sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can be sure that you're exploring all sorts of options. And best of all, Credit Karma uses your credit data to show you your chances of approval before you even apply. Because for those that don't know, when you apply for credit cards, your credit does get run. Just like when you apply for an application for credit on a vehicle or anything else, your credit will be run. All right. So go to Credit Karma. Create your own karma, all right? We want you to head on over there right now. Go to creditkarma.com or download the Credit Karma app and find the car for you. That's creditkarma.com. One more time, creditkarma.com or download the Credit Karma app to find the best card for you. Hey, hey, it's a good segue uh, talking about Credit Karma. Kev on stage, you've been in your, like, business bag. You've been, like, Gary V in it up recently. Man, I have. I can't, I can't, well, let me tell you something. I've already found my spot on the cape that I'm going to ride your coattails to. Like, when, <laughs> what's the rest of the world, Father? I mean, I got me and Ken, oh, we go back to Tacoma, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, uh, you know when I, I was actually writing a, lot, a couple of things for Playmakers, you know, before Jason had a beard. You know, that was, uh, I was a lot of me. I actually introduced Kev and Melissa. <laughs> you, you say you were a harmony on his original <laughs> intro? <then>? <laughs> 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 I bit Kev, you understand me? I mean, I'm be comfortable on them coattails, baby. <laughs> so I remember when I saw, because you and you and Melissa have also been in your TikTok bag. So mm-hmm. I remember when I saw the the her facial expression that that video. Oh I, my as God. soon as I saw it, I was like, "This bout to be everywhere." Oh, that man. video did numbers on my page. But Bro. then you dropped the strate- I strategically did that. Yeah. Well, the thing about it is the strategic part was everything after the, I, Josh made it. Like, I literally... So, Josh recorded that video. Mm-hmm. Like, I really fell asleep oh. during a podcast. Oh, that wasn't okay. even on purpose. Like, I really was tired, and it was an ad, and I was just like, <laughs> let me just close my eyes for a minute. But apparently, I went to sleep so fast, I was snoring. Mm. So her During look an was, ad? During an ad. Now, I'd be in that bed. You yeah. understand me? During the day, during the night, I'd be in that bed. <laughs> so, her look was like, bed. are you snoring? Like, you are so asleep that you're snoring. Mm-hmm. So I heard. So when I got up, I looked at her and I was just like, mm, "Let me sit up." Like, <laughs> but then I didn't think nothing of it. So right? it was an actual organic moment. It was an organic moment. Josh tagged me on my story. I was, like, "Oh, that's funny." Reposted it. Didn't think nothing of it. Mm-hmm. But as I do, I always check my analytics, especially if I haven't done a video that day. Mm-hmm. I always see, like, I use my stories and Twitter as kind of like bait. Mm-hmm. Like, what's what are people responding to? Is this worth making a video or not? So if something goes like I, I like I said in this video I made today. I checked the analytics and I was like, oh, it had like 500 interactions, which is a lot for mm-hmm. me. And the point I want to make to people is everything is relative. 500 is a lot for my stories. For you, it might be 100 or 50 if you usually get five or 10, because usually mine get like 90, 100, something like that. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like, oh, snap. And then I went down. I was like, oh, people tap back a lot on this. Let me at least make this a main page mm-hmm. thing to like have a piece of content that day. But uh, what I realized when I was explaining is I do so much of this stuff without thinking about it. But when you're teaching somebody, you have to show them the, the why. So, like, one thing for me on TikTok, I could not grow at all until mm-hmm. I realized the caption goes in the video. Right. TikTok, the caption is so not a part of their algorithm, I don't even realize what people actually type in the caption at the very bottom. Because their algorithm is not designed for you to see what people mm-hmm. type. Huh. You it'll have cut to, it off. It'll cut it off. Yeah. Or it's just there's so much information down yeah. there, like... You don't you don't look at the bottom of a TikTok. You mm. look at the middle mm. and the top. So I know the greatest TikTokers, they leave about this much headspace. Mm-hmm. They do their videos at the bottom third, basically. Like that guy who just goes like this. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's a, he just has to they, do that. Leave, you, they literally leave room. Like, the, the, my favorite TikToker is probably art by Demarcus Sean. He just does a whole bunch of relatable I think I follow thing. him. Black dude. He always leaves this amount of space. He just does really relatable things that are like, man, why I didn't think of that? But anyway, so I put the caption there. Once I started doing that on TikTok, because people think I got a lot of followers on TikTok because I'm big. TikTok do not care mm-hmm. who you are on another platform. They don't, like, let me rephrase that. If they recognize you after they see you, they might follow you. Mm-hmm. But you have to play by TikTok's rules. And that's putting the caption there or using the trending thing or relatability. So anyway, I was like, how do I promote oh, this? Yeah. I'll yeah. Instagram now, I'll how do I promote this masterclass? Because if you go straight up promoting, mm-hmm. the algorithm is always going to suppress it. Yep. So I basically was like, let me show people that that viral videos are rarely, if ever, luck now. Like, if we are professional content creators like we are, there's so much strategy that people don't understand, like, that we do. Like, when we're doing this, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, bet, I'm doing patent them thing. This would be fun, right? But now I'm like, pocket sausage, take that, repurpose that for my mm-hmm. stuff. That little rap thing, take that, repurpose that for mine. Mm-hmm. On this now, I'm like, when, when Tahir asked me, I was like, first, yes, I'd love to do it. Haven't kicked with you guys in a minute. But then I was like, they'll probably let me do this on my Patreon. Mm-hmm. That's a benefit. So I'm always thinking about the business, the, the business mm-hmm. aspect of it. But people don't realize that because, I mean, it's... I, I, it, I it, focus on it. It looks easy. It, it looks they easy. They don't see what you just said. They don't see that part of it. They right. don't hear that part of yeah. it. So they're just like, man, this nigga can't be cranking them out. But you're always thinking... The question I want to ask is, I lived most of my life like that while we were at all deaf digital and like the next couple of years after. Mm-hmm. How do you pull out of that mode to actually be present in the moment and relax? I don't. That's <laughs> that's the, why that, he's falling asleep all the time. That's that's yeah. where I'm fall- That's th- it's a great question. That is the flip side of that coin. When I go on vacation, I I tell myself I'm going on vacation. I'm not gonna search for content. So usually yeah. I get up in the morning. I go through Twitter. I look for what people are talking about. I'm looking for a video to make mm. and podcast content because I produce Here's the Thing. I come up with the ideas. I have some help now, but for the most part, I, I see what's popping. And I go through TikTok, and I watch as a consumer mostly as a creator. What's mm. a new thing? What's funny? What can I rip and make my own version of? The problem with that is I see my social media as an engine that always needs coal. Mm. So I've always got to put something in. So I spend my time in St. Lucia, and I'm like, okay, I'm relaxing so my content will be based on my vacation. Mm-hmm. So if I go in the pool, here's how nice this room is. Something cool me and Melissa ate. We went to the mud thing. Like, mm-hmm. But I'm still always going right. because that's my engine. This is me. This is like Kobe or Jordan. Like They play the game, and then they go after the gym and get up shots. Yeah. And it's like such a – and part of it is unhealthy, fear, yeah, of failure, of it. mm-hmm. anxiety. It's not all like – So you're like, still operating on a small sense of survival mode. Dog, I, I don't want to tell you guys this, but I'm going to tell you because it would be so stupid. <laughs> Let me go four or five days without a video doing well. I'd be like, I'm out. Yeah. I got nothing left. Nobody yeah. knows how to do it. I, I'm shadow banned. The kids beat me. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, until the next million, and I'm like, I'm, I'm right back, baby. And then right. three or four, and that's like my fear, like working on Churchy. I'm mm-hmm. like, dog, for these four weeks, I, I don't have the time to like Make do what I do. I mm-hmm. literally can't because I want to be a good actor. So mm-hmm. the time I would be using for like searching, I'm, I'm memorizing my lines. I'm also producing this. So people are calling, hey, Ken, we're going over budget. We got a late payment. So those four weeks, I'm like, I'm going to be crap. So that's why I'm like, Josh, come Help me make these reels. Mm. And again, same thing with the vacation. I'm telling a story of what I'm doing. Yeah. But I know that's going to do poorly. Mm-hmm. Because Instagram and reels, they be like, yeah, nigga, your real life. Like, mm-hmm. that's not as interesting as the stuff. Nigga, anytime we post a clip <laughs> of our How do they comedy know, is though? what we love to do, right? <laughs> it's our first love. This is why we're doing everything else. You post a clip of comedy, they be like, shut up, nigga. Man. We don't care that's about your dreams. This is so hard to promote. <laughs> it is so hard to... It, that's why I have to basically trick people sometimes because it's like, even if it was successful, right? If it's a su- successful ad, that yeah. means people are watching it and immediately clicking off yes. to go buy a ticket. Right. Instagram suppresses that because it's unsuccessful for Instagram's needs. Right. So if you watch it and you don't enjoy it for itself, you immediately go click off, it's going to suppress it. Yeah. If it feels like people aren't engaging in the first three seconds, 
it's going to suppress it. So you're fighting against an, a, all these algorithms System. that want you to pay them yes. to mm-hmm. promote it to people. Even but when like, you bro, pay them, you though, pay them, it don't they be, don't, listen, it don't be worth it. I got right. the last results back from my Facebook ad. I did a Facebook ad from the day I started it up until the day um, of the first show. Mm-hmm. And I put $700 ad behind it. Like, let me just make sure this first kickoff in Sacramento is fantastic. I got one of them. <laughs> the uh, They give you updates. And the update was like, uh, zero impressions made, zero clicks, <laughs> zero, zero, zero. I was like, cancel. Zero? It, it, that week, it just didn't do anything because they post to Instagram and Facebook when mm-hmm. you buy it. Um, and this was before I had got ad manager because they keep switching apps when they change the name yeah. or anything else. So now you have to do ad manager to even do video ads. Yep. Otherwise, they only let you do a flyer ad on like the Facebook app. Mm-hmm. You have to right. have this this app that they created just for this to have all the capabilities of even posting. But are ads. the chances high that someone who's never seen or heard of you clicking on that and buying a ticket? No, no. it but seems like it's it it's easier. To to your yeah, it's you easier to, to you sell to, to your own demo. You have to pick your demographic. So you why pay pick. for why pay to boost then? Because it it will it, what will happen is it, it won't even show it to your own followers. Like because he's he's so here's the problem with marketing to a city. Tahir has a show in where was it? Uh, which, Sacramento. Sacramento. But his fans are all over the United States. Right. So that ad really needs to be targeted to his fans in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's easier to promote the keep. Uh, it's easier to promote the Kevin Stage tour, so people can see all the cities mm-hmm. yes. and then find their city. But if I promote Sacramento, then people who live in Florida are like, "Oh, this is Sacramento. I don't care. This is just second nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's not talking to me." And every swipe up, the algorithm says, "Well, people are not engaging with people this. People don't like it. Yeah. yeah so show less like, of it." So Facebook is like, you want to talk to Sacramento people, you need to pay us and we'll show it to people in Sacramento or your segment of people in Sacramento. But then if you're competing with companies who spend, like all deaf, we were spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to market. So when you give them $50, $100, Facebook's like, nigga, that ain't no real brand. They don't you care really nothing wanna, about it. You need to give us $10,000. But it's like, bro, if I give you $10,000, i am not going to eat. I can't even right. make $10,000 on this show. Right, right. Well, Facebook's like, well... Companies are are paying ten. Those other that's companies, insane. they're paying ten thousand, hundred thousand dollars. That's why Kev on Stage Studios is so hard to market hmm. because you you're competing with Netflix, Hulu, Hulu, Hulu Apple, millions. They have billions oh. of marketing budgets. I mean, billions of dollars of content, and then hundreds of millions for marketing. Yeah. they can literally. I'm watching the NBA Finals and I see an advertisement for Doctor Strange, hmm. or I'm watching my. Thing and it's like Doctor Strange in theaters Legit. now. Oh, not even, not that, even just there. That money. When Netflix did the festival, they had buses wrapped. Right. They had billboards. <laughs> they had paper flyers. Like they got the money and the reach to do things that we can only dream about. And doing the crazy right thing now. about that Netflix is a joke festival. And I don't know if I'm sure this, but it's I don't, hopefully they don't find out. They struggling right now anyway, so they might not be worried about me. They hit me up to do a comedy show, so I'm like, bet I'm in there. Mm-hmm. What's the offer? They're like, oh, the offer is you, you get promote to do this the show. comedy show yeah. and you get to keep the money. And I was like, well, what's the benefit of Netflix? They're like, well, we get to, you get to say it's from Netflix as a joke. And I was like, but I'm going to be competing against everybody else in L.A. Mm-hmm. promoting their comedy shows. Yeah. And I'm shooting my own show, so I'm tired. And I've got to promote. So I've got, and i got to pay the comedians. You didn't, they didn't give me, the offer nothing. wasn't to give me nothing. So I mm-hmm. might have made my money back if that. Well, did, did, they, did they at least offer a venue? No, well, the venue is like a door deal. Okay, right. Oh, but I would have to pay the, yeah, the cost. Yeah. So it's like they're so big they don't even have to offer you anything. Mm-hmm. And it's not like a festival like Just for Laughs where like there's people already coming. Right. This is just a comedy show at the Wilshire or comedy. You know what I mean? Saying like, this is just a comedy show. Right. But that's who we are. That's why the Kevin Stage Studios is. It's not struggling, but it's a struggle to promote mm-hmm. because you you are competing. Like hmm. Workplace Comedy is a great show. It's a fucking fantastic show. But we have to spend. We would have to spend a hundred times what we cost to make it mm-hmm. to tell somebody about it. And yeah. Netflix has That's that. I mean, they have, they probably spend what we could market on that on laptop chargers. You Wait. know what I'm saying? Like the money they spend on snacks uh-huh. is more than, than we have to market. Oh, so, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you Damn. have to create ads. You like remember at all that we had people's whole job was to market that like come mm-hmm. up with the marketing and then do a paid media strategy and then manage that. Right. Nigga, that's why Trevor. That's how took, you. That's how Trevor took off. Trevor learned analytics and how that shit worked. Yeah, out of here. I was at Man. I was at Freddie Gibbs concert. At he got the beat Noble. up. I saw. Yeah, again. 
He just keeps having it. I don't want that for him. Freddie, yeah. I like Freddie. Me too. Yeah. I'm a big fan. It's the rabbit. Um, but I'm I'm at the concert waiting in the start, and across the screen comes Trevor's promo for his show at, at the Noble. No, at the, at the Noble. Like, oh, 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 hell yeah! So it's like, but you at Freddie Gibbs show? I'm at Freddie Gibbs show, and it's just like Trevor. He's I mean, everywhere. Once he left all deaf, and it he was took his <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. He was he was going a viral like like maybe a few months before that. He started yeah. he did the the Venice Beach thing mm-hmm. and he was just like oh, Trevor's a master. Here we go. He and he listened, uh, quiet is kept. He's thanked me for like helping him. Yeah. Nice. But he understands the internet. Right. Yeah. Even his uh stand up clips, his how sta- he does bruh, them. Like mm-hmm. you have to understand the plan. It's like street politics, right? Mm-hmm. If you're not a street person, mm-hmm. you won't succeed because it has its own rules yeah. and what's right. successful, what you can and can't do and all that stuff. The internet's the same way. You have to understand how it works, how this algorithm works. It's not just like MySpace was just like literally a place for friends. This is mm-hmm. prior to algorithms and stuff. They didn't have a business model that was was requiring you to uh, stay on longer and share. It was really mm-hmm. just, this is fun. Right. Facebook started off like that. Because yeah. remember, early days of Facebook, you was you had like a hundred friends. Mm-hmm. You made a post and everybody who was your friend would see that post. Right. It wasn't like, we're going to show this to a segment of Pat's friends. It was like, oh, you are a friend of Pat's? That means I've asked you to show me right. their stuff. Instagram has gotten Man, so far from that, that now. You I don't even know who's on my person. I don't even know who's They're on trying my to turn it into like... TikTok. Because TikTok's algorithm went the other way. They were like, we'll just show you great content regardless of who you follow. And and if you like them, we'll show it to you more. But the, the negative of that is you don't follow people on TikTok. It just shares people with you. Right. But the positive is you see people from all over. Uh-huh. But that's what huh. TikTok built its premise on. Instagram was... Switched. Be- I want to f- see my friends post. And right. that's why people are so frustrated with Instagram and not TikTok. It's because on Instagram, I want to see Cameron and Patrick and Tahir because these are my friends. I want to see their posts. Instagram's like, but if you if we get it like TikTok, you'll stay longer. Mm-hmm. But on Instagram, you're like, nigga, they're not showing me my people. I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing I'm going right over to TikTok. Right. To I mean, do the same thing that Instagram is trying to do, but I accept it on TikTok's platform. No different than BET. On BET, people got mad if it was ratchet stuff, because mm-hmm. BET's supposed to be a strong brand. Right, right. Take the same ratchet loving hip hop, put it on VH1, I will now watch it. Yeah. <laughs> because it's, I expect more from BET. I want you to do HBC. I don't expect shit from VH1. VH1, I will now consume this content. So Viacom's like, nigga, we own both of these. It doesn't matter what no, to but, us. Yeah. But that's why BET always struggles, because black people want it to be everything and everything, everything for everyone, uh-huh. and it can't be. But the content is the content, and Viacom don't, they'll put loving hip hop on CMT. As long as they can watch it, <laughs> doesn't matter. But that's why Instagram they is get the ads. crazy. They get the audience, they don't get the ads. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> is that loving horses? Loving clock clock. <laughs> Low key, I might sign up for that. <laughs> what was that? You talked my steed. <laughs> hey, but that's why white people watch Love and Hip Hop. Because they're like, oh, it's, it's black people fighting. <laughs> Like this, look! Look how crazy they get. And I feel like that it. would be that would be us watching CMT. It's yes. just like dang. Well, He's... that's the thing. Like Zeus, which is a network like Kevin Stage Studios, they said, okay, BT, I mean VH1, Bravo, they can't make. They they always have to have the newest, strongest art reality stars. Mm-hmm. So Jocelyn was on one of those shows. I don't mm-hmm. know, remember which. Black China was on one of those, but eventually they cycle out. Mm-hmm. Zeus was like, you want drama and crazy stuff, man. Jocelyn's cabaret. Mm-hmm. We're going to let her unleash because although she's not a big star on Bravo, part of their current plan, mm-hmm. she's still recognizable yeah. and, and and polarizing. Mm-hmm. They did it with Tokyo Tony, mm-hmm. Black, China, Black China, Drea got a show coming out because people and black people, and now they we got like the, that content. We they got it. the guys doing it. You and got, no one else ever done that. No right? one has done the, the bad boys of anything. And guess how Zeus started? They started with with. Influencers, yeah, yes. I remember King that. Ba- remember King Batch and mm-hmm. Adam Day and Storm, Storm? yeah. And They're guess what? Stuff. Influencers have a hard time moving their audience because the platform doesn't want you to do that, right? So Zeus was like, "This is not working. I don't get it. They have millions of followers, but they don't. It's not always community. It's just like mm-hmm. I like you on this platform, mm-hmm. but I don't necessarily like you for you, mm-hmm. like. And I'm not trying to be mean. I mean, like, right. I like your posts. That doesn't mean I'm. I'm interested in your show. Right. So, it, and when you promote it, it's like, man, this ain't the thing I signed up for. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like Tony Baker with his animal stuff. He got to go three times as hard to promote a comedy show. Yep. He do animal voiceover. It, it be shown to everybody because the algorithm is like, oh, this is the thing they signed up for. Right. But he really wants you to come to his show. They'd be like, oh, nigga, then no. Right. Cats. 
So anyway, That's I crazy. said all that to say this is the without money, infinite money. This is what we be struggling with. This is why mm-hmm. I be take it be so hard to. Well, it has to tip at some point. Like, and I feel like I don't know if the 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 apps we're on now is gonna do it or the next one. But the the first time that it starts like being for the the creator, which mm-hmm. it seems like it's going, I feel like that app is. Well, listen, it's about all to of do these it. people leaving, they definitely sit that festival and they saw the biggest. Decline of memberships that month. Yeah, are these people gonna need somewhere to go? Come on over to come Death on Row, to your boy. Netflix says they're gonna lose else. more the next quarter. Why? Why? How do they know? Like, that? If they're introducing all these, if they new doing things? those yeah. ads, yeah. Oh, they because they, uh, at this point it's like you're you're going to be paying as much as for Netflix as you would for cable. Mm-hmm. Yep. And cable, well, you can. have live TV. You have you still can get movies. You might have to watch them with commercials, but damn, if you're gonna have to watch it with ads, there, at least you'll have. You can you with cable you can watch all the Marvel movies you can watch yep. all the Disney movies all of that still comes on so mm-hmm. it's like why had, pay for it? They had their their problem is they they almost had a dot com bubble burst mm-hmm. problem. They their company was built on on quarterly growth regardless, but there's a finite amount of people mm-hmm. to market to right. They they capped out in the U S three or four years ago, um, 150 million I think. And then they were Damn. focusing on Asia and Europe and all that type of stuff. But eventually, the only way to make more money is to get more subscribers or raise the price. People are not accepting you raising the price over and over if they're it not enjoying the comedy. Yeah. It was definitely yeah. yeah. for the it last three years. But yeah. the problem is Disney Plus is five ninety nine. That's the thing is all the other apps are really cheap. Like Hulu with ads is what, like four ninety nine? Four bucks. Netflix That's with crazy. ads will probably be fourteen ninety nine. Yeah. I'm, I'm not paying like fifteen dollars for ads. Yeah. And then the worse than even that, they don't have the best content anymore. Yeah. Before, like, bro, Disney Plus has Star Wars, Marvel. That's crazy. National Geographic. Hulu has Snowfall. Well, because Netflix was built on licensing everyone else's content. Now right. they're making their own, and it's not doing as well. Because they're right back in the same problem that every other person in the Hollywood has, which is like creating and developing a hit show takes time, money, and luck. Yeah. And <clears throat> you competing against people who you had their best assets for pennies on the dollar. And now you don't have none of that stuff. And That's it's not right. Netflix isn't alone. Peacock struggle, CNN Plus mm-hmm. opened and closed. Like yeah. it's not just Netflix. Another Quibi, basically. Quibi mm-hmm. was just bro, Quibi, they gave the money back. I thought they lost all six billion dollars. What you mean? They they got investors, they lost a lot of money. They saw how poorly Quibi was doing. They were just like, we'll just give y'all investors the money back. So maybe we can do another deal with y'all later. Cause we're just gonna waste all this money. Damn. That's how bad Quibi. I didn't worked. even know that business worked like yeah, that. Yeah, Quibi. I didn't either. I read <laughs> up on. It. I was like, "How y'all burn six billion? They didn't burn all six billion. They uh-huh. eventually okay. gave it back." And the crazy thing about Quibi, this is just idiotic. They didn't have a way to share content. Like you couldn't, you you couldn't oh, even. Wow. Wa- you had to watch it on your phone. You couldn't watch it on your uh-huh. TV or oh, laptop. Oh, they didn't have so it. So you couldn't it was, stream it. What? You wow. couldn't stream your own content. Yeah. They were building it for a world where people were on the go, and then the pandemic happened, and people were at home. But in theory, you're at home able to watch more content. They were just, and they had every celebrity in the world. Yeah, they mm-hmm. did. All mm-hmm. top dollar. People were just like, nah. Yeah. That's where that uh, rap judge show with Cardi B and yep. Chance and stuff was, right? Rhythm and Flow? Yeah. No, that was Netflix. That, that was Netflix. Netflix. Oh, okay. They yeah. didn't even bring that back. Yeah, they didn't. Well, I, th- I heard they were going to, but yeah, they haven't yet. D Smoke still, he's still flourishing, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's the only one that I know of. Yeah, I mean, I follow <clears> some <throat> of the other people from there, but they they just never didn't do it like he did it. <laughs> You sound disappointed in them. I mean, not for them. I, you know, I want them to win. I wanted yeah. everybody to win. There was some yeah. really good acts on there. Some good talent on that, but you know. But yeah, to your er- earlier point is, it's something that I can't turn off. You know what's crazy? It's Kev told me, I, I need to find a way to turn it off. <laughs> Say, to here, you work too much. You need I, to be I more turn pre- it down. You need to be more present. Now, Kev, when he was talking, I was like, well, why don't you just film some videos before you go on vacation so you don't have to post on vacation. You just film them and then draft them, and then post them, and then you can take footage for your vacation and post that the following week. I do that. I repurpose old stuff. I usually just go through TikTok and download old dad jokes and stuff and repurpose those. I do take some time away. But my goal is to not have to use social media like I do. I want to get to Kevin Hart level where he just be drinking wine. He just be naturally funny, but mm-hmm. he's he's so successful outside he of social media. millions of views on workout videos. Yeah. He be in the gym. He's like, we up at 4 a.m. Yeah, literally. Working out. People like, I he love this. DC yeah, Young Fly. DC Young Fly, don't, he ain't had to roast nobody. Remember how many roast videos he used to make? Right. Mm-hmm. He used to be on everybody. It's just 80, if he does just 85 South uh, podcasts and live clips, it's like, it's great, more. It's enough. <laughs> and he's also working more. in traditional Hollywood getting... 85 Hell South yeah. money and mm-hmm. wilding and wilding out, man. 
They're about to go on about. a comedy tour, yep. right? And you talk about that show be on. Yeah, really? It'd be on TV. And I just found out about this two days ago, something called Fast Channels. Are y'all familiar with that? Uh-uh. So Fast Channels are when you buy a smart TV, which a lot of us have, mm-hmm. if you just print the internet, before you go to like apps, you just turn the channels. Like Samsung has channels that are built in, that are free mm-hmm. with ads. So Wild and Out has a channel that just plays Wild and Out all day long. Oh, Samsung like, has one like that for Law and Order that. too. Yeah. Oh, forensic files. Is it Law and Order forensic? Yeah. yeah. They that, have a dog, crazy. a channel for dog. Like it's yeah. called Lucky Dog. And I just thought this was like I never pay attention until my boy was telling me about it. And he was saying there's so much revenue because as Netflix gets more expensive, people are just like, well, I'll just watch this. On my it's TV? all the way back to regular TV. Yes. Right. Channel I three, four, coming. five, six, and seven. If you are watching it, mm-hmm. then advertisers will say, well, shoot, all these people are watching it here. I, and and this free. is where this is a cable is like t- underneath. It's, it's on the cable. smart TV. It's like you on your smart, smart TV. TV. Yeah. They come with the. Yeah. They come with the. It, uh, on, like I've never oh, looked at it because app. you just go on yeah. to Netflix or play right. video games. I have seen yeah. that. Yeah. So whatever your channel's on before you turn it on, uh-huh. that's what's called a fast channel. Huh. So yeah. with, with the price of gas potentially being ten dollars by the end of summer. Wait, is that true? Yes. What? Because supposedly they ran out of gas in Washington State. And they were talking about gas just oil. out. Yeah, it happened. They, like they ran out of gas in Atlanta a, a couple times. Yeah, I was. We were in Atlanta. That time. Yeah, that's they, so, crazy. Like you're putting gas and that's at in, six in now. I saw bags. I saw seven dollars here yesterday. Yep. Um, so, so they tried to make it seem like we're saving the earth by switching to electric when it's really like we're actually running out of gas. Well, no, there, there's actually isn't like a. I mean, gas is cheaper a bar- per barrel than it's ever been. It's just the gas companies are just charging whatever they want for it. And oh. the Russian war didn't help yeah. either. The Russian war, like it went up during the war, but then like gas prices per barrel have dropped, but the price prices per gas per gallon have stayed. Strong. So the gas company was basically like, yeah. y'all kind of got used to that." Six, exactly. Huh? They're like, "You're already <laughs> wow. paying for it, and you have to. So, you need it." So why are so. we projecting it going up to ten at the end of the summer? They're like, "I'm gonna be an asshole." <laughs> it's like be insulin. That. You know how much I'm it costs to make insulin, and then July. insulin be stupid expensive because they're like, "You you finna die if you don't have this." Crazy. Oh, and it doesn't cost that Bro, much to present. Bro, I saw the thing with insulin. No, because you can get it in Canada for like un, it's like ten dollars. Ten dollars. So that's the highest America be type thousand dollars. Like, oh, you want you don't want to die? That's evil, bro. Because like, cause like I get it. Like, evil. a nice car is just like, oh, you don't want this car? You can't afford it? Then you can't have the car. It's like, all right, right. But like, nigga, insulin. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but I need that. Something shouldn't be uh, commercialized. Monetarily, yeah. yeah. Like it's like Pfizer. Listen, say what you want. Pfizer, Moderna, COVID was the best thing that happened to them. Oh, yeah, they loved mm. it. They increased their revenue for like billions. Six, that seven crazy. billion dollars. You know, all them testing companies, the money we spent for keep your distance and we just did churchy. Doggone, COVID, the COVID test, dog, it's more than anything. I think that's why they're keeping it going at this point. Because they're well, just Well, you've like, built an it. industry now. You Now you've got employees that you'd have to fire if it went away. You've right. got all of these positions now that have been created that are in like jobs for people. And if you remove that. It's TSA. Yeah. There was no TSA before. You went to the uh, airport, put your stuff through a medical metal detector, showed your ID, mm-hmm. and went. You actually, I don't remember even showing your ID until it was time to get on the plane. Remember, you could go to the gate and mm-hmm. be like, Cam's coming now. You could we'll pre- be pe- yeah, people could come to at the, the gate. gate. Not anymore. September before, 11th, it was before like, that? yeah. So, I mean, do they have to kind of keep the fear up then to keep that going? Oh, yeah, it's always that. It's yeah, always I mean, that. I think, you think about it, we haven't had... I mean, you can say this is the TSA's responsibility, but it's been 20 years, over 20 years since anything like that happened. I'm not saying you should get rid of the TSA. I'm just saying it wasn't there before. Now it's there, and it's never going to go away. It's a whole industry that's a part of airline. And then clear, TSA pre-check is now a way to make money off of that. that. You pay for that, and now you don't have to go in that line. And then clear is even more than that. None of those things exist if you don't have... right. You don't have the t- the the TSA. But problem. that's a lot. Of, I mean, it seems like they would have to work with media to oh, it is. keep yeah. that fear alive. Because yep. there'd be some stories that are like, are people this dumb? Like, guy comes with an M16 on a, a Spirit flight, and it's like, why would anybody do that? <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. That makes sense. To keep though. that fear up, man. Fear is fear is profitable. Yeah, war is profitable. Like, I mean, they, that's what's in the news. That's why people watch the news. It's, yeah, right. like. That's it, it, fear. The like if the news, if people really liked dog stories and mm-hmm. in warm moments, that's what they would. If warm moments sold like fear does, they would do warm moments. But Fox, CNN, they 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 push people's fear 
and what's they, they're doing the same thing we're doing on social media you're putting out right. content and seeing what people respond to and if they respond to it more you get more advertising dollars it doesn't matter if i believe this or not mm-hmm. all that matters is that these are the, it's the same con- same way they're just bigger yeah. versions of us but this how is much what? is it like social media like do you think that they just focus on the negative stuff or do you think they make up negative stuff i think both i, I think definitely they, both like, well they spin it there's a, there's a way you can spin any story to make it sound however you want it to sound absolutely and i think over the years they found <laughs> that this people respond to this mm-hmm. and if you respond to it we can do more with that stuff if people responded it's just like us creating content no different if we found out people love home us holding cats and helping homeless people or doing something like that, we would do that content. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's... People it's, still do it, though. People oh. still... They do what audiences respond to, but then it becomes a chicken or the egg scenario. It's like, yeah. are they responding to it because you created it? Or are they responding to it because it's already there? Right. Like, mm-hmm. now... Or did you make them respond to you it because them you put it on Because you, yeah. you, you do that. But, like, like the whole COVID thing, like, the gun sales in America went crazy <clears> that <throat> first year. You couldn't even... There's still a bullet shortage <laughs> like you can buy guns, but you can't buy bullets. <laughs> Bullet shortage so, is wild as hell. I have a what you want to share? I have a uh, conspiracy theory. Well, let's nice. do it because we're about to get ready to get up out of here. So um, the retired police officer in the the mass Buffalo shooting, um, the kid? I, no, the the older guy, Aaron, older black dude. Yeah. Oh wait. Uh, what? He was a retired, uh, yeah, the, the kid, the, the white kid that shot up the Buffalo. Yeah. yeah. They're saying that the security guard was working on a hydro-powered car. And all of this information is coming out. And it's a conspiracy theory because uh, immediately what I thought about was Jack Reacher. Remember Jack Reacher when they shot... That guy shot all of those people, but it was really just to cover it up to mm. kill that one person mm-hmm. because it was slowing up business or the production of that business. What's yeah, it was to cover, yeah. Is that yeah. Tom Cruise? Yeah, yeah. The person on Tom Cruise. So oh, it's the movie? that was when the, sh- yeah, the shooter had killed like eight people on the waterfront, but he was really only intended to make just to kill that one person. That was the, the shot because that person was holding up a deal that would allow uh, this company to make it look like a make, mass shooting. But they made it look like a mass shooting to, mm-hmm. to, to yeah. mask it. And I was looking at this this video, and it just popped in my head. Like, what if is so, that is that so far fetched that we can't see that happen? That's one of the people who died. Yes, and he was work, working on a, a hydro car. Yes, that's crazy. A car that would you could basically go anywhere just by putting a gallon of water in your car. A couple okay. people who tried to revolutionize the gas industry disappeared. Like the first guy that made that that electric car. Yeah, that was like electric cars. Was long, the yeah. first cars were electric, mm. and then they're like, "No, nah, don't do that." We, we you know, gas. you know why <laughs> I believe that more than ever. <laughs> don't do I went that. on a weird like rabbit hole of Titanic conspiracy theories because mm. I've always heard them, but I never researched them. Apparently, they they were trying to. Cam, have you ever heard about the one the Titanic theory of um, the U.S. Uh, Treasury? I think because wasn't there a ton of. Wasn't the Titanic carrying something? And they were, well, there was three people who were take who were uh, holding up the deal of of the U.S. having like either a national trust or yeah. something like that. Yep. And it was like the founder of Macy's and and two other people and a bunch of of the bankers who wanted to canceled their tickets the last second. And the three people who were holding up that deal were on the the the, the ship when it, when it when it when uh, it <laughs> when it sunk. So it was kind of like there's a bunch of t- conspiracies, but that's the one that holds the most weight. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if you'll sink sink a damn boat full of white people, bro, to kill three white people, <laughs> and I've only seen this story on one outlet, like they're not giving us any traction of the hydro car. Yeah, they're not giving it any traction. It didn't come out until after he was after he died, and nobody's really talking about it. Like nobody, I, no. I other don't put outlet. that past That's they, crazy. but I also don't put it past that that kid. Buying the uh, is it great replacement theory? Yeah, that's great it. replacement theory mm-hmm. uh, that white people are being displaced and therefore I'm just gonna go kill them. Like you know how wild it is that you drove mm-hmm. hours to specifically go to a black neighborhood, yeah, and go to a uh, I think the, they're saying the grocery store was in like a food desert. Yep, well, that's why it's his is more suspicious actually. What that the hydroplane guy was there? He drove all the way to that specific place to kill those specific black people. Well, it was motivated for sure. This guy wasn't like a nut who didn't know what he was doing. Right. Yeah. But who who better to contact than a nut who already thinks that? You know what I mean? And like, 
Have y'all seen Shooter with Mark Wahlberg? Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like like cons- like government conspiracy, since we're in the conspiracy section, I, I feel like it does go that deep. Like, if we're going to take this person out, he can't just be assassinated. So let's find somebody who buys this manifesto, because that's the easiest people to manipulate, because he thinks he's doing it for the So the do cause. you think they pushed him to kill that person, or he's like a government operative? Well, they know, probably, they, if like, they know he's a security guard, they know a security guard and retired cop. He's still going to ho- have those instincts to like jump in front of a bullet, to try to save somebody, try to talk somebody and down. And he was black, so he could have just been shot, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was already a target. But do you think someone was like uh, telling him to go there, or this is part of like if he if 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 it's just that guy, mm-hmm. someone would have to say you have to go to this grocery store right. and kill him. Not, not you couldn't just frame him up, right? And then but, drive to how Buffalo. How hard is it to have a division that works for the government? No one knows about, and they can access people's computers. And now you're routing the specific content that this mm, person's seeing. What you're saying, yeah. Oh, that's. Have you seen that movie? Um, oh, Deus Ex Machina. Yep. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. So the premise of that is exactly what you said, and I'm gonna have to spoil it to explain it. So Oscar Isaac is this genius guy. Love him too. And he's fantastic. Great actor. And he 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 basically makes this kid think that he's coming to this remote place to mm-hmm. learn about robots. The idea is this robot is uh, he's using this kid to to pass the Turing test. You know what that is? Yeah. Mm-mm. Turing test is is developed by Alan Turing. It's essentially the idea is if they were to make a robot sentient. Uh, if you pass the Turing test, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tim, it's like you wouldn't know whether this is a robot interaction yeah. or a human interaction. It's basically yeah. you're you're put in a test, and you've got to prove whatever the person you're talking to on the other end is a robot or not. Yeah, Jesus and he's Christ. testing these robots, and it, robots pass that. Well, no, no, ba- no, basically humans have to pass it by saying whether. So basically, you'd be sitting in a cubicle, and on the other other end, it'd be feeding you information, and you'd be asking it questions back and forth. And basically, the robot is trying to trick you into thinking it's human. And so far, it hasn't been successful, but like that's the test to prove like if an AI was successful. And that's yeah. in real life or just in this movie? No, no, that's oh, in real yeah, life. Yeah, real life. In, in, but in the Christ. movie, he was developing a robot that's humanoid, right? Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful woman. And the idea is he, the, the guy is the deterrent test for this robot. Mm-hmm. But he thinks it's just random. Mm-hmm. But towards the end of the movie, he fi- figures out that they find out what kind of woman he likes, shape, uh, shape size, eye color, build, all this stuff. So this robot was specifically for him, Mm -hmm. and he knows it's a robot when he comes in, Mm -hmm. but the robot basically takes a whole movie to convince him that he's not real, that Mm -hmm. that she's not a robot. He believes it, then she just immediately kills him, (laughs) locks him in a room. (laughs) Kills him, then locks him in a room? Well, she she locks him in in an airtight room, and they're in the middle of nowhere. But the whole point I brought up... He suffocates to death? Yeah, I mean, either suffocates or stars. But she was just like... I mean, she literally looked at her. Well, she like, didn't she escape? She did. Yeah. And then she goes into the world, kind of like Westworld, yeah. goes into the world as basically a human robot. But she looked at him like, "Suck to you, nigga." And <laughs> terrifying. Left. But Jesus the whole point Christ. I brought it up is because the what we feel like is random, random and natural, is actually designed. Well, and, mm-hmm. Right. And how I mean, they're saying right now the whole January sixth thing is even more planned because they have security footage of them showing people around the Capitol. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Before it happened. Oh wow! Those same people. Yes. What the? F- some of the Bro, people who are there are running for Congress now. Yeah. Wait, in the riot? Yeah, some people who were present during that are running for Congress. Somebody was like, why weren't the police at the thing? They were like, they were. They just didn't have their uniforms on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were participating. <laughs> they, that's weird. They didn't have the stuff on, so you didn't know. You didn't they, know, but they were there, my boy. But that's what they're saying. Like, Russia doesn't need to invade us in, the, uh, in, in like... Do all that stuff. They're they're capitalizing off of racial tension, mm-hmm. and then just stoking the fire, and just like basically having America turn against itself from the right. inside out, which is much more successful. Because if you attack us, we actually will band together. Right. If you can get us to attack each other, it's it, it's Russia is basically the Marvel movie Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The nigga who didn't have no powers, but was just like, what if I made y'all niggas hate each other? The mm-hmm. the helmet, uh, Zemo, Baron Zemo, Zemo. in that, yeah. Civil War. That's yeah. what Russia is to us. They're just like, he's like, I'll take you down <coughs> if you fight each other. Right. And I don't even have no power. I just, I just, I'll just poke at this. You know, mm-hmm. Pat, man, he's he's taller than Tahir, man. Tahir, man. What do you think about Pat, man? He he beating all them women. You should. And then you're just like, yeah, I do hate Pat. And then then I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then, Civil War. And then I just bring them in and you, you scare <laughs> into Kevin State Studios and <laughs> new people. But that's basically. Basically, what we do, because right. it's much more effective. So then, why would Russia? What, what would Russia and Ukraine do? I don't. Well, do what, what do you mean do for us? Like, what would that? You mean if the we war? were if we were fighting each other? 
Yeah. They would then they could do it basically we'd be focused on ourselves while they could do whatever they want to. They could invade more countries, oh. get more land, do more things that we don't like, but we're too focused yeah. on ourselves to handle that. And look, crazy and look at how black people be on Twitter. <laughs> when you talk about Ukraine, it'd be like, Yeah, nigga, but what's going on here? And then Russia's like, Exactly. But also I'd be like, But nigga. <laughs> Buffalo. It's hard to be concerned about because they once I was and this is I I'm gonna just say the truth. Dang, I was like, damn Ukraine, that's that's I feel bad, man. Ah. And then I saw uh, the Ukrainian people is calling the black people in uh, Europe niggas and not letting them through. And I was right. just like, well, right. you know what I mean? Like, we, yeah. got, or we just gave them a huge sum of money for aid. Billion. And I'm like, we, we have some problems that we need to solve here, too. 40 billion, Cam, while we had a formula shortage. Yeah. they were, And the formula shortage was millions. Mm -hmm. It was like, we'll be solved with 26 billion. I think they figured something out. But it's like, y'all just gave the 40 billion yeah. that quick? That passed so quickly through Congress. You know what 40 billion would do for if they just wiped off student loans? But here's the mm. thing. This is what they don't want you to know. Capitalism only works if you always have a lower class. Oh, you have to. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. to have people who are subservient to serve, to do the work. Because the rich people, Elon Musk and Trump, I'm talking about 1% rich, yeah. not just people doing okay. Yeah. They, they, they can't. It doesn't work if we all win. Yeah. We all got to win. That's why I be fighting against myself. Like, that's why I do things like keep your distance and stuff where it's like, it don't be crazy lucrative, but it's, it's, we got to, we have to work together because mm -hmm. the 1% is just pushing down. Like they're mm -hmm. pushing. That's why student loan, like that college began as a way to keep white people getting jobs and the other people not getting jobs. Right. When college stopped being people get jobs, it's when everybody could go to yep. college. It was like, well, now we can't use that as a, as a separator. But now college isn't giving you a job. But by then, they already have the debt needed mm -hmm. because guess who doesn't have student loan debt? <clears throat> People who are rich. Well, like, and there's that mindset now you've ingrained it. Go to college to get the job, and now that's no longer a thing. But you're still paying care. so much to go to college now to get exactly. that job. You have the degree, but uh, yeah. we need somebody with experience that already worked in an architecture forum or yes. that knows how to read blueprints and, and actually can go on these sites. It's so like, now what? they just they literally <laughs> yeah. just yeah. flipped it, which is crazy. So my experience is learning definite, about it though. Literally, <laughs> like when I got my job at Boeing, I, I it clicked. I was like, oh, y'all just didn't want to interview a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. If you put you need a college degree, at minimum you have to interview less people. The right. actual job was glorified data entry. All my job was you if you wanted a plane, right? You basically order your plane online. You say, hey, I want a 737. I want extended range so it can go 700 miles instead of five. I want it It's just like ordering a car. Tinted windows, seats like this. Like, you pick all these things, right? Do tinted windows come out of a plane? No. But that'd be dope, though. Well, actually, no. The Dreamliner can have yeah. tinted windows. It, 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 in, inside tinted windows. They, it, like, they, change color. The, they change the color and everything. Oh, wow. And they tell you what they when you're going on a transatlantic flight, they'd be like, it's nighttime now. And it would be like nighttime. Hmm. But all my job was is take Pat's order and say, Patrick wants uh, this plane, this color, this seat, this thing, you know, 15, 20 data points, mm -hmm. and then submit. None of that required a college degree. Isaiah could have done that job. Typing is more imperative. Literally, yeah, all I had yeah. to do is not transpose data. That's literally all I had to do. There was nothing smart about that. Yeah. But if you want to uh, separate. separate people or just not interview a lot of people, you put that one indicator, and now your pool is... Yeah, it's like, ah, oh, I got to do this in four years. Well, yeah, most of the job requirements that they put in there are to deter people who don't think they're qualified to apply for the job. Bingo. And they could probably get it. We mm -hmm. could easily do it. My son, huh. no, not even joking. By the time that I had that job, my son, Isaiah or Joe, could have done that job. It's literally copy and paste information. Well, and Pat, most of the time you get hired off of an interview if the person likes you in that interview. Bingo. Mm -hmm. And the only care. reason I got that job is because the black lady there wanted black people to win. So she searched through resumes and tried to determine if people were black because she couldn't tell. She told me this later. was like, don't tell nobody, but I got fired and I'll never say who she was. And she was, I had a youth pastor on my resume. She was like, well, that's a black person there. Ain't yeah, nobody absolutely. else going Because I was trying to fill my resume out because this is after <laughs> I got fired from the bank. I'm like, what was you doing? I was uh, training the kids. <laughs> but like to Cam's point, she was looking out for me, and then I had a great interview, then I get the job. But qualification for qualification, anybody at my high school could have done that job, even the people who flunked out. Mm -hmm. Anybody at 10 years old could have done that job. That's but crazy. it was like, oh, I'm a scheduler. And then I got there. I was like, nigga, it was, it was way harder to work at Burger King. Well, like, and, then, and then you wonder how people <laughs> keep jobs when they're really bad at their job is probably because they interviewed really well. And now it's super hard to fire that person. Bingo. Because they was trying to fire me too. No. But it was too late. That's why it <laughs> seems like... I'm already in, baby! I'm already in, my boy! <laughs>
it seems like everybody who like scammed their way into a job just had crazy confidence when they walked in. And mm-hmm. That's all it really. Some of it think yeah. about it, and listen, I, I don't want to bring this all this down, but think about like abortion rates, like abortion as a thing. And I've been reading about all these people. One theory I thought was interesting is if you make a person, a poor person, have a child, you almost guarantee they stay poor, and you increase yeah. the chance that that child is poor. Oh wow! And because, now you can control more aspects of their life because they have to now submit to all the civil, the all the like uh, food stamps, uh, mm-hmm. any of that kind of or stuff. Or work, work fast food. They they they'll might probably not be able go, to go to college. They'll be enlisted in the military if they're poor. Wow. If, bro, the military. Do if you, you have think, people yeah. who don't need, most of the people that go to the military, it's not for patriotism. It's because they don't have no money. The patriotism right. is if you go to the like the West Point yes. cadets, if you become like an officer, that's yes. kind of your. Didn't you say last week something like like that was more to make soldiers? And yeah, stuff? a lot of the a lot of the anti-abortion is because like we need we need a population to fight our wars. Who's for us. gonna go over there? But people who don't who who are like once I realized that the military doesn't post up at uh, rich schools. Oh yeah, mm. I never knew that because they were at yeah. they were at every school. I, I went to three high schools. Mm. They were at every one. Right, and crazy thing, I went to my nephew's graduation last weekend, never clicked in my mind. During his culmination, they said, I mean, just casually, I don't think these people are doing it on purpose. You know, whatever you do after high, because it's a military town, whatever you do after high school, get a job, go into the service, you know, go to college. Three or four times, whatever you do, guys, go to the military, like your mom and dad. Like, slowly, you're like, when I grew up, I thought I had to go into the military. It was like kind of brainwashing. Slowly. Yeah, absolutely. Slowly brainwashing. And I'm like, dang, you don't... It's either a job or the military, but you're already on a military base because you need more people to go to Afghanistan mm-hmm. and do this and that or r- risk your life because you know them rich people's kids is not finna go. Absolutely not. They're, not, they? they're not going to war. Boy, did you see... Um, <laughs> Damn. Well, it's like Trump the... evading the draft exactly. and Bush evading the draft, all the presidents, because they were rich. They're not fit, and they're yeah. and they're not going to face put them the in same the air force. Quant- put them in the air force. Consequences. Yeah. That's the easy one right there. Um, air force what was is that, the rich the... one. Mm. A lot. Yeah. What was the one where they they uh, had the, the soup <laughs> shop, but they were actually like Kingsman. Kingsman. Mm. The, ri- the the okay. the last one that just came yeah. out, the Kingsman, right? The, the the guy is literally in the middle of a war, and his son wants to go sign up for war, and his son, his dad's like, Nah, you good, my yeah. boy. Well, just be rich. I mean, we got, yeah, we got service. He's like, You don't need to do that. We yeah, got other people who are right. Yeah, we we rich, baby. You know. That's and it's wild. crazy, like you live. They, there are people who literally grow up there. Like Me that. and my wife, we we have this problem all the time. It's like, how do you raise a kid? Like we're we're doing better in life than we were than our parents were. So it's like we worked fast food jobs because we had to. That was the only way we were gonna get money, help our parents, things like that. Like my kids, just Zay Zay and Jojo, they don't have to mm-hmm. go work for um, McDonald's or Burger King, they don't have to go to the military. Mm-hmm. If they want to go to the military, you're going to have to come up with a reason, right? Mm-hmm. Cause now, watch this. My nephew's uh, dad is in the military because he had a baby in high school. 18, pregnant, and not my sister didn't want an abortion, neither did he. But if he didn't, if she could have got an abortion, he don't have to go to the military. Oh, wow. She could go to college. Like, if you forced her to have it, she was going to yeah. have the kid anyway. But right. if you forced her... Then he still has the same problem with him, with them just agreeing. Right. But if he didn't have that, then she goes to college, Damn. has a totally different life. He doesn't go to the military. Right. Now magnify that by the whole population of the United States. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you see, because guess this, and this is the thing, and this is not even pro-abortion, anti-abortion. It's just the thing that I find interesting. Them politicians is having abortions. Oh yeah. No, it's not yeah, a moral yeah. thing. Yeah. No, no they definitely. It's are. like, well, nigga, well, that's y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I got my aide pregnant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the aides is definitely getting the wrong. <laughs> And late night working on the speech, yeah. And and the abortion stuff, it's not going to make it impossible to have abortions. It's just going to be hard for poor people to get safe abortions. It's a control. Rich people Uh, are always going to be able to get whatever they need whenever they need. The rules are never going to apply to to rich people the way they do to poor people. You can't, like, you can't leave this. Like, say you're poor in Texas and a free abortion is in California. Uh And there's no barriers except money. If you can't get to California, then you you're, you're out of luck. Baby, Just yeah. by making it not available in your city, there's a lot of people who are poor who never can leave their city. So just that barrier. You think a rich person they go to California where it's more than likely going to be if it's not um if it's banned federally, then it becomes a state yeah. a state's thing. There's going to be states like California, Washington, it's going to be No, it won't be banned be, federally. It won't be protected federally. Oh yes, you're right. You're right. Which leads uh, it up to the states. Yeah. So the south 
right? Texas, basically, they, no, they say it's no. gonna be no abortion. Yeah. California, you're gonna be able to get an abortion. So that person in Alabama, whose dad's rich, is getting on a plane and going to California. Mm-hmm. That person who's in Alabama and their dad's not rich or they don't know their dad, if they do get it, it's gonna be a lot harder. They're gonna mm-hmm. just be like, well, give them up for adoption. Even if you get it for adoption, that person's still gonna have to work. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. that's what it becomes. I thought it was just where people just That's believe crazy. in abortion based on Christianity. Right. No, nope. always. And you some find darker. out people really like people be having abortions. Christians. I found out my homegirls like I grew up one way. Then you really talk to people, niggas right. like, bro, I couldn't have that kid. It, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's always a darker story that's just like, wait, what's going? Yeah, on? What's well, happening? Dark. You know what? when, somebody told me about. I'm, I don't mean to interrupt. No, interrupt. Right. I remember somebody saying, if you don't know a woman <laughs> who's been raped or sexually assaulted, then you there's just a woman who doesn't trust you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And once I I heard that young, bro, when if I if you don't if you don't know a story of a woman who's been raped or sexually assaulted, uh-huh. assaulted, then they're just not telling you the truth. Yeah. Got it. Cuz okay. the chances of it not happening within right. your circle, right. it just it, it's just not true. Right. But when I grew up and we were talking about with our homegirls, I found out about every other one yep. of them had mm-hmm. some at least sexual assault, if and, not and it's full on heartbreaking. Dog. It's just like it's just like wait. And it ain't, that happened to you? Dog. Like, yeah. Cuz when I grew up, I thought it I always thought it's somebody in the Central Park grabbing a woman. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. The, it's it, always presented as yeah. like a... The parking lot yeah. thing, the elevator. Bro, it's almost always family someone you knew. Somebody mm-hmm. in the family. Somebody the family. knew that didn't take no for an answer. It's, right. it's rarely, if ever, the somebody grabs you in an elevator in a dark night. Right. That does happen. Right. But mm-hmm. more likely... It's a person they knew, mm-hmm. and they just and then they just don't report it because right. look what happens when you do. Like it's, it'd be worse for you to say it. You just going about your life if you know because you, bro. In a, in a rape case or sexual assault case, the first thing they do is is blame the victim. Blame. It's always mm-hmm. a lot of victim blaming. You know what, what were you wearing? Why were you yeah. out there? Why mm-hmm. were you Why were you hanging around those parts? It's like motherfuckers. Cr- I was living life, bro. <laughs> I had to get dressed. I didn't know. It's yeah. Like, like, why were we dressed away? It was a dress. That's why right. it was past my, my sons. Beat. Not and the and the idea of consent um, needs to be taught to our our sons mm-hmm. because I remember James Davis had a joke about this. He's like, some of that stuff that I did, he was like, nowadays, mm, yeah, I didn't even realize what the rules were. Like, th- like how many times did we has it been taught to us that it's fun to go to a party, get a little drunk, mm-hmm. and fool around? Mm-hmm. Right. That's rape culture. If no you get a little way. drunk and fool around, you just have lost consent. But nobody's actually telling you, actually, you shouldn't get drunk right. and fool around. Because I, that's what I teach my boys. You should not have sex. You shouldn't get drunk and fool around at all. Because right. if you get drunk and fool around, the likelihood that she's having a different experience than you have is much higher. Right. Especially uh, if you don't know her. Mm-hmm. But that's not what we were t- that was not no, what we were talking about. None of us right. about. You buy a lady a drink. Lube. That's how you start the, lube, the, the conversation. Lube her right. up. Yeah. Get her. Relax herself. Yeah. All they're really saying is get her to Defenses not, down. Get her, def- her actual ability to make a clear choice. Mm-hmm. Reduce that and you have a better chance. Take her That's ass wild as hell when you think about it. it yeah. well, Take her to Starbucks at 2 p.m. You have a better chance, have like, a better chance yeah. if you get her right. a few drinks in. Mm-hmm. It's like a better chance. You know what I'm saying? So, But but again, and then if that woman wakes up and something happened that she didn't want to and everything she sees is how it's going to mess up her life, right? then she's going to be like, ah, I'm not going to say anything about that. And now that that's that's why it's rape culture. It's not an idea. It's a, like a it's a culture that. Mm. And then also you, and you, have to dis, you have to dismantle that thinking. Yep. You have to be cognizant yeah. enough to know I can't teach my kids this. I have to change my thinking. Right. Even because a lot of guys like they'll show something. Like, oh, well, she said yes in a text message. They can say no at any point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I tell and my brother, then my sons. You are, oh, you right. are people go back to the you're last going yes. Against yep. consent. It doesn't matter if they said yes and there. Motherfucker, you know how many things I've agreed to do in plans? Right, what's the and update? And then be like, nah, I'm not going <laughs> What now. is the updated oh, thing? And, you, yeah. and you're basically denying a woman the opportunity to say no if she changes her mind because she said yes in a text? Well, think about what you what we teach boys overall. It's be persistent until you get a yes. That yep. Yep. Right? right, it's like break her down. Mm-hmm. Oh, like you're yeah. te- we teach we teach our and I, I was taught this. I was told this was a, that's a red flag now. Uh, yeah. Yes, for yeah. Back physical. in the day, it was just hard to get. She's right. Hard hard to get. Get. right, right, right. Or Let she, me wear her down. Yeah, yeah and it's like but dog, persistence. Like, we that's the whole culture of what we're taught in how you get them and you know all the that type recording. of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's like dog, or you just could like. Not though. But you could you could also women. be persistent without being right. Like, oh, physical. right. Yeah, you could just I, be like I, I, checking in. Exactly. Well, you know, what I mean, some right. women appreciate that. There's but a lot it's of like, ways to do that. That I've, usually leads to some weird shit, though. Yeah, I've talked to women 
that said basically that they in in less words that that they were sexually assaulted mm -hmm. because somebody kept asking, kept asking, kept asking every time they saw this person. And I think they, they worked or went to school. So they were seeing them like damn near daily. They would roll by their house and all this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And eventually she yeah. just was yeah. like, he's never going to stop. So I'll just do it. And maybe if I do it, then he'll leave me alone. That's why I had to teach my kids. That damn. David Dobrik thing, that YouTuber. That. Yeah, who, yeah. I had to I had to like take that in and Wait. the 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 YouTuber, he basically the the woman said he created an environment where I felt like it was unsafe to even say no. Mm. Right? She didn't say no. She admitted that. But she was like, the way they pressured you and like it just felt like I couldn't say no. Yeah. Interesting. And their whole environment. So they I gotta go back. Pressured you? The, the his people. The whole team pressured. Not like pressured over sex, but it's like you set up an environment where you don't feel safe mm -hmm. to say no. That's crazy. So you feel like you yeah. have to say yes. Yeah. Right. So I tell my boys, like, I was like, well, shoot, let me go talk to my it's, kids it's about that. That video, remember one that video? Say, one thing I want to say, because I, I, I forgot. Here's the other thing. The, you remember the swimmer in Stanford who yep. got accused yep. for rape? Yeah. Yep. And then wasn't beat he the found? Wasn't he found? Oh, yeah. Two, two, two on bicyclists top of the girl. found basically pulled him off. In of the her. Yeah. In the act. Right? And the judge yeah. gives him like three months or yeah, something like that. that. Imagine if you're a girl who got to go through all that, girl or woman, have and to go through all that. Three months. That's part of rape culture as well. Because yeah. yeah. if I say something, I'm going to get destroyed regardless. Mm -hmm. And he might only do three months, and now my life's destroyed, and he gets to go on about his whole life. Same mm -hmm. thing with Brett Kavanaugh. He gets to go all the way to the Supreme Court. Yep. So it's like that part of not protecting Supreme your Court. people. Yeah. I mean, he found in, he's in the doggone, like, grab you in the park thing. Yeah. Like, you, other people saw this. And he's the that, cookie cutter. Rape, like right, <laughs> rape cutter. Yeah, and he and and then but now you go back to whiteness and protecting him, like he gets. He's got a, a good chance. career, Kev. He's right, and yeah. it's like that was the craziest, like <laughs> out there. Dog. It's like, but he's a swimmer, like, <laughs> huh? Yeah. But it's also it's little things. I I mean, or if you, I apologize, no. we did it. I already did it. No, that's fine. But think about little stuff that I had to really understand when you when you have a kid. Little handsome boy, what do we tell him? You gonna get all the girls? Mm -hmm. Look at my little heartbreaker. He gonna be doing this. We always talk about sexualizing kids versus heterosexual <coughs> or homosexual. We already sexualize kids. Mm -hmm. When you say little stuff like you gonna be, you gonna be all my. If you, hmm. I used to think about that. If I caught my son, yeah, I never thought about that. If you catch your son, a lot of dads were thought like this. You caught your son uh, making out with a girl in middle school. You really gonna be like, boy, stop, wink. But if you caught your daughter. It's a totally different scenario. Mm. Stop being fast. We talk. He, stop being fast. Head. Being manish. Yeah. And even mm. molestation. Like we, this been going around. Like a lot of comedians and rappers been talking about this. Kendrick Lamar talked about it in his album a little bit. I was basically molested and didn't realize it because I was taught to be the man. So I, I'm 12 years old. Me and my homeboy, both 11, 12. His older sister has a homegirl who's letting us suck our titties and stuff like that. And we think we are nigga. We the man. suck our titties. Yeah. Right, and it wasn't until we were—I think it was us, or I was on another podcast. I don't remember when I realized it. Somebody in the comments was like, "Nigga, you was molested." I was like, "I sucked the titties. Mm -hmm. How I get molested?" They were like, "If you were a girl, and that was a nineteen-year-old man, and you were eleven. You, you would say that's molestation." That, I'm like, oh, "The girl was nineteen. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ." But D-Ray had a story like that that's been going viral. All these rappers, like that's Boosie, wild. basically said that. He got women for his sons to make them a man. Oh, when yeah. they're underage, these are grown women. That's that's sexual assault. Mm -hmm. But you think you're the man. So right. it didn't even click. So it's really the people around you like, good yeah. job. And you're like, but oh. it's the whole society. Yeah. Like yeah, it's yeah, in yeah. movies, it's in TV shows. It's it's a lot of this stuff you don't even pick up. You mm -hmm. just like get the older sister, get the older girl, get the woman, the graduate, stuff like that. So I right. thought, and I don't even feel like I have no trauma from that. Cause I right. yeah. still in my mind, I'm like. She was nineteen. Titties, though. Though. Titties. Titties. Though. It was. It was. Big well, it head. was imprinted. It wasn't imprinted as a negative thing. You no. Know? no, no, no. And there were yeah. no consequences for it. Mm. Right. He got pats on the back. You got daps and all that type of pats stuff. Pats on the right. back. Right. Right. Yeah. That's my Twitter, Twitter name. name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen. We went a little. I don't know over, how we got from this was, yeah. rap to Young Thug to pocket sausages to rape culture. It was deep, but it was a conversation <laughs> that everything. Everything. we had. It, man. There's some hey, analytics in there it too. It was always so good to have you on, man. Hey, we man, really appreciate you. All we right, pores. It's good to come and remind myself <laughs> what it's like. <laughs> pores. <laughs> and that this is, is that my, is an elitist uh, culture, guys. My, <laughs> That's exactly it's negated yeah, everything you just now. Said. Yeah, he's you hanging out on such a high, <laughs> high total. This is this is what happens when you become a Republican. You start hanging with Dave. <laughs> and you start canceling the shows of comics that are up and comers. Thank you guys so much for coming and watching. Uh, shout out to the uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> shout out to the stage crew for hanging out with us for a little bit. Shout out to the Scary Squad as well. Always, as always, I'm to hear more. I'm okay, Patrick Cloud.
I, I messed that up. Let's do it again. As always, I'm to hear more. I'm Kevin Faith. I'm Patrick Cloud. I'm Kevin Faith. We'll see y'all next time. <laughs> Peace. Appreciate y'all, man.